हेलो मेरे प्यारे दोस्तों इस सेशन में हम लोग पी के सी एग्जाम में आए हुए क्वेश्चंस के रिकॉल को देखेंगे और साथ ही साथ उस पूरे टॉपिक को समझने की कोशिश करेंगे ताकि नेक्स्ट टाइम इफ दे चेंज द लैंग्वेज ए बिट वी विल स्टिल नॉट मिस दैट क्वेश्चन ओके सो लेट्स ट्राई टू सी ऑल दिस क्वेश्चन दिस वॉज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन इन विच डिजीज द रिजर्वायर एंड सोर्स ऑफ इन्फेक्शन बोथ आर सेम कौन सी बीमारी में स्टोरेज भी उसी में हो रहा है और फैला भी वही रहा है तो इसका आंसर है दो बीमारियां ऐसी हैं एक तो है टिटनस और दूसरी है रेबीज दोनों में जिसमें इंफेक्शन स्टोर होता है वही फैलाता है ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन था कि चिकन गुनिया के बारे में क्या करेक्ट है सो so, This type of question is not that difficult actually, because one two things we know, and by ruling them out, we can reach to the correct answer. Like here, we all know that chicken gunia is not transmitted by culex. Chicken gunia is transmitted by Aedes. Aedes transmit five disease. One is chicken gunia. Second is of course dengue. Then there is Zika virus fever, and yellow fever okay and last but not the list is rift valley fever kon kon si panch bimari hai rift valley zika virus yellow fever you just have to remember zika yellow rift valley dengue chikungunya you already know so it is not transmitted by culex culex transmit three disease je filariasis and west nile fever and and rift valley and west nile can be confusing but it's not so difficult to remember culex is known as nuisance mosquito because culex breed in dirty water so we can remember west nile fever as west nali fever nile ko hum log nali ki tarah yaad kar sakte hain nali mein bhi ganda pani hai aur culex gande pani mein breed karta hai to west nali fever nali means sewage area drainage area west nali fever is by culex and rift valley fever is by aedes okay so remember aedes and culex separately now a safe and effective vaccine is available for commercial use we don't know this and i suppose i don't know this so this is a question mark but we all know that first is wrong okay incubation period is 4 to 7 day i was not aware of this but while answering this question when i go through park i came to know incubation period for chicken gunia is 4 to 7 day and one of the prominent symptom is arthropathy this we all know arthropathy mostly involved knee joint and then it in, involve ankle joint and because of this patient is unable to walk properly that's why we call chicken gunia as langda bukhar disabling fever so arthropathy is definitely correct and one is definitely wrong that we know so one is wrong that means a and b is ruled out and we all know four is correct so four is here that means the only correct answer will be d so even if you don't know about 2 or 3 aapko 2 aur 3 ke bare mein kuch nahi bhi pata hai pehla nahi hai aur chautha hai isi baat se aap answer de sakte ho to isliye is tarah ke question mein kuch nahi bhi pata hai to bhi koshish zarur kariyega and correct answer is 3 and 4 incubation period is 4 to 7 day prominent symptom is arthropathy okay next question in which of the following vector borne disease transmission chain is man snail man aadmi phir ghonga phir aadmi mein kaun sa bimari phailta jata hai to uska answer hai cystisomiasis ye cystisomiasis uh urinary bladder mein blood vessels mein ja kar ke reh sakta hai ye insaan se jata hai peshab aur latrine ke raste se pani mein pani mein jo snail hai उसके अंदर मीरा सीडिया लार्वा चला जाता है और मीरा सीडिया लार्वा फिर जब सरकेरिया स्टेज में जाता है और सरकेरिया स्टेज में फिर वो स्नेल से वो इन्फेक्शन वापस जब इंसान वो पानी गंदा पीता है तो उसमें फिर से सिस्टिसोमियोसिस आ जाता है तो ये इंसान फिर एक स्नेल फिर इंसान है ना मैन स्नेल मेन में है और दो इसमें इन दिस लाइफ साइकिल देर आर टू स्टेज यू हैव टू रिमेंबर मीरा सीडिया एंड सरकेरिया सरकेरिया इंटर इन मैन Mira cedia enter in snail, and this cystisomiasis occur in urinary bladder and blood vessels. So this is cystisomiasis, which is causing this thing. Now, which of the following mosquito-borne diseases are transmitted cheap, chiefly by Aedes? We just did it. 
एडिस ट्रांसमिट डेंगी बट वेस्ट नाइल फीवर विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज वेस्ट नाली फीवर नाली इज बाई क्यूलेक्स ओके सो दिस इज नॉट बाई एडिस क्यूलेक्स एज आई सेट ऑल्सो ट्रांसमिट टू डिजीज जेई एंड फिलेरियासिस रिमेंबर फिलेरियासिस इज द ओनली डिजीज विच इज ट्रांसमिटेड बाई ऑल फोर मॉस्क्यूटो बट इन इंडिया फिलेरियासिस इज ओनली ट्रांसमिटेड बाई क्यूलेक्स ओके फिलेरियासिस सारे चार मॉस्क्यूटो फैला सकते हैं मनसुनाई भी एडिस भी क्यूलेक्स भी एनोफिलस भी इंडिया में सिर्फ क्यूलेक्स से होता है अब सेलेक्ट द करेक्ट आंसर so of course yellow fever zika virus zika virus fever these all are definitely transmitted by aedes so the correct answer will be 1 3 4 1 3 four is c okay so just remember the disease name and this type of question will not be wrong this is very important area and this is just one table from park where this disease are being listed in culex you can see west nile is written J E is written, filariasis, and then viral arthritis is also there. Okay, yet A D S have this Rift Valley fever, along with chikungunya, dengue, yellow fever. Next question: In which of the following is best defined as the interval time between reception of infection by a host and maximum infectivity in that host? समझो, मेरे अंदर कीड़ा घुसा और मुझे खांसी आई. सम पैथोजन इंटर्ड इन टू माई बॉडी एंड आई कफ्ट फॉर फर्स्ट टाइम फर्स्ट सिम्टम सो इंट्री एंड फर्स्ट सिम्टम दिस गैप इज नोन एज इनक्यूबेशन पीरियड बिटवीन इंट्री एंड फर्स्ट सिम्टम फर्स्ट सिम्टम ऑफ पेशेंट ओके नाउ वेन द पैथोजन इंटर्ड इन माई बॉडी वी कैन नॉट डिटेक्ट इट ऑन द फर्स्ट डे इट टेक सम टाइम for antibody level to rise and for detection so till the period the disease is hidden inside me that is known as latent period latent period means the gap between recipient of infection and detection earliest detection before dekho latent ka matlab ye chhupa hua to jab tak latent period hai tab tak pata nahi laga sakte hain at the end of latent period we can detect it till latent period it is hidden now generation time is the definition of this thing mere andar keeda ghusa aur mere ek khaasne se ek sath 10 20 log infected ho gaye and my one cough infected many people together so i am now maximum infective this gap is known as generation time okay gap between entry and appearance of maximum infectivity and जनरेशन टाइम इज इक्वल टू मीडियन इंक्यूबेशन पीरियड एक और चीज होती है ये जान लो मीडियन इंक्यूबेशन पीरियड ये क्या है मीडियन इंक्यूबेशन पीरियड मीन्स दैट ड्यूरेशन विद इन विच हाफ ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन डेवलप सिम्टम जैसे मान लो आपने मेरे ऊपर छीका और मुझे दो दिन में खांसी छीक आनी शुरू हो गई तो मेरे को पहली छीक आई दो दिन में इंक्यूबेशन पीरियड कितना हो गया दो दिन अब मैं अपने घर में गया मेरे घर में दस लोग रहते हैं एक्चुअली और दस में से पांच लोगों को सर्दी खांसी छीक आने लगी चार दिन में तो वो दस में से पांच लोगों को चार दिन में सिम्टम आ गया तो यानी चार दिन क्या हो गया मीडियम इंक्यूबेशन पीरियड आधे जनता को कितने दिनों में सर्दी खांसी शुरू हो गई और ऐसा पाया गया है कि उसी चार दिन में मेरे को भी सर्दी खांसी सबसे ज्यादा होने लगेगी मैं सबसे ज्यादा लोगों को इन्फेक्ट करने की पावर आ जाएगी है ना इन दैट सेम फोर डे ड्यूरेशन आई विल आल्सो बी मैक्सिमम इन्फेक्टिव तो इसीलिए मीडियम इंक्यूबेशन पीरियड और जनरेशन टाइम इस इमेजिनरी स्टोरी में जो मैं बता रहा हूं दोनों चार दिन है दोनों बराबर होते हैं लगभग जितने समय में एक इंसान मैक्सिमम लोगों को इन्फेक्शन पहुंचाने लग जाता है उतने ही समय में लगभग आधी जनता में बीमारी के लक्षण आ जाते हैं ओके और हम ये पूरी कहानी बता रहे हैं लेकिन बताओ क्या हमारे पास कोई भी ऐसा तरीका है जिससे हम ये पता लगा सके कि कीड़ा हमारे अंदर घुसा कब था इज देयर एनी वे बाई विच वी कैन नो वेन द पैथोजन इंटर्ड इन आवर बॉडी देर इज नो वे बाई विच वी कैन नो वेन द पैथोजन इंटर्ड सो वट डज इट मीन डज इट मीन दैट ऑल दिस डिफिनेशन आर इन एयर विदाउट एनी मीनिंग नो 
we don't know when the pathogen entered in our body but we can guess it how we can guess it suppose you coughed on me and i develop cough cold in two day i coughed on one of my friend he developed it in next two day and that friend coughed on some other girl and she developed cough and cold on next two day so everyone is developing symptom in two day that means the entry of pathogen must have also occurred two day back so this is known as serial interval serial interval means time of passage of infection from one person to another passage of infection from one person to another within which duration it will pass from one person to another okay passage of infection between two people or between person so there are total four definition let's revise it together incubation period means gap between entry and appearance of first symptom latent period means gap between entry and first detection median incubation period means gap between entry and appearance of symptom in half of the population let's say if i de started developing cough and cold in two day and out of 10 of my family member five started developing cough and cold in four day so median incubation period will be four day and it has been found that in the same four day the first person who developed cough and cold become maximum infective so this is generation time and generation time is equal to median incubation period last definition is of serial interval this is time of passage of infection between one person to another okay and serial interval can help us in knowing incubation period serial interval se ye pata chal jayega ki kida ghusa kab tha aur agar mujhe se dusre insaan mein do din mein symptom ja raha hai to yani serial interval se hame ye bhi pata lag jayega ki kitne dino mein symptom aa sakta hai serial interval help us in detecting incubation period because it tells us the time of passage of infection so it can detect when the pathogen was being transmitted and developing symptom okay so serial interval can help in detecting incubation period okay it's roughly it can roughly help us there chalo i hope the four definition is clear now coming to the next question this was on the heat sensitivity of the vaccine they have asked what is the correct order of the above vaccine as per sensitivity to hit most sensitive to least sensitive most to least and again this was a direct question from park textbook here they have clearly written that most most sensitive to hit is opv opv is the first one most hit sensitive after opv there is influenza then there is ipv o i i opv influenza ipv o i i and along with ipv there is mmr group of vaccines and j okay after o i i and mmr next group is having this uh, rota virus vaccine yellow fever vaccine dt vaccine cholera vaccine so basically this is hexavalent and pentavalent vaccines cholera vaccine yellow fever vaccine cholera yellow fever pentavalent vaccine come here and rota virus come here after that there is bcg so bcg and tetanus vaccines are here and last group group e is 2h hepatitis e hib and two cell wall vaccine meningococcal and pneumococcal so that is the least heat sensitive so most heat sensitive will be opv then there is influenza then ipv and measles and all after that there is pentavalent vaccines cholera and yellow fever vaccine then there is bcg tetanus vaccines and last is hepatitis b pneumococcal meningococcal vaccine and if you look at the question they have asked that arrange this in decreasing order so the first one was opv after opv there was influenza which is not given here after influenza the second was ipv after ipv if we go back to see hepatitis b after ipv hepatitis b is the last one hai na so hepatitis b is last one bcg is there so opv influenza ipv 
then there is cholera and pentavalent then there is bcg and last is hepatitis b least heat sensitive so based on this we can clearly say opv is first after that there is influenza then there is ipv after ipv there is bcg vaccine and after bcg last is least heat sensitive is hepatitis b so the correct sequence will be 4 then 3 then 1 then 2 4 3 1 2 it is in the option d so this is the correct answer 4 3 1 2 remember opv most heat sensitive then influenza then ipv oii and <laughs> after this uh, ipv there is this mmr together with it and then there is cholera yellow fever rotavirus bcg and tetanus and last is hep b pneumococcal meningococcal uh, next question exposure to gases in common hazard in industry out of the gases which are given here which is an asphyxiating gas which will affect the breathing capacities and all so it's very simple to remember carbon monoxide is definitely asphyxiating chloroform is not asphyxiating chloroform is anesthetic then cyanide gas is asphyxiating after carbon monoxide and cyanide gas chlorine can also be asphyxiating chlorine gas can also be as asphyxiating okay so carbon monoxide cyanide chlorine gas is asphyxiating that means the correct answer will be one and three option a one and three let's look at the list of asphyxiating gas being given here uh, if you will focus you can see that they are trying to say carb asphyxiating gases are this is asphyxiating gas asphyxiating gases are carbon monoxide cyanide gas sulfur dioxide and chlorine in the next question so i hope it is clear there in the next question they are saying esi is not giving uh, which benefit you know these benefit are given which is not given of course we give disablement or disability benefit this disablement or disability benefit is 90 percent of the salary is disability benefit funeral expenses we give is fifteen thousand rupees maternity benefit this question has been asked is it for 24 week 26 28 week how much it is for 26 week with 100 percent salary so it is 26 week travel benefit we never give in esi scheme so this is wrong correct answer is one two and three only c and a disability funeral maternity we give do remember the extended sickness benefit extended sickness benefit is of two year sickness benefit is of 91 day and enhanced sickness benefit is given when you cut your wire for vasectomy and tubectomy enhanced sickness benefit is given and it is seven day for vasectomy 14 day for tubectomy enhanced but extended is two year okay difference between extended and enhanced should be clear next question which of the following vaccine best represent intervention that focus on cancer prevention also one is definitely human papilloma virus vaccine for cervical cancer second is hepatitis b vaccine for hepatocellular carcinoma prevention do remember this question has been come that which subunit of hpv vaccine indicate high risk for cervical cancer answer was e7 e8 subunit if you found these two subunit this indicate high risk for cervical cancer indicate high risk for cervical cancer okay second point is which strain are very common in uh, causing cervical cancer hpv 16 and hpv 18 sola or atara third question which subunit is used in vaccine formation of cervical cancer lumba lumba subunit l1 l2 subunit are used for vaccine preparation so l1 l2 used for vaccine preparation 16 18 is most common and 
E7, E8 indicates cervical cancer risk. Now, government of India has started giving cervical cancer prevention vaccine, HPV vaccine, to a uh, girl between 9 year to 14 year, one dose of HPV vaccine is given nowadays. Okay, so one dose between 9 year to 40 years, girl child. Okay. Next question. While calculating the number of expected pregnancy per year in an area, a correction factor usually 10% is applied. Okay. This is the statement, assertion. The second statement is, all the pregnancy in the area may not be registered by the health worker in that area. So now you have to think and answer that this 10% which they are saying, is this 10% factor is to compensate for those pregnancy which are not registered by health worker? Or is this 10% is for some other purpose? You have to tell that this 10% is the same as the 10% of health worker record. If this is the same as the 10%, तो इसका मतलब कि स्टेटमेंट सही भी है और सेकंड स्टेटमेंट फर्स्ट को एक्सप्लेन भी कर रहा है है ना यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट इफ इफ दिस 10% इज दिस वेस्टेज इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ नॉट रिकॉर्डिंग देन देन सेकंड स्टेटमेंट एक्सप्लेन फर्स्ट आल्सो सो व्हाट इज दिस 10% दिस 10% इज नोन एज प्रेगनेंसी वेस्टेज फैक्टर एंड प्रेगनेंसी वेस्टेज फैक्टर सिंपली मींस दैट not all pregnancy will go till term. Some pregnancy will have abortion. Some pregnancy will deliver children which are not life. So there can be abortion, there can be stillbirth. This 10% is added but this 10% is not due to less recording. This 10% is due to those children who are not getting delivered live. This is known as pregnancy wastage factor. Okay. So that means statement 1 is correct. Statement 2 is also correct that health worker is not registering all the pregnancy. But statement 2 is not explaining correctly statement 1. Okay. So statement 1 and 2 are independently correct. But statement 2 is not a correct explanation. Not a correct explanation will be right. Okay. If they have written in the second option that 10% of all pregnancy goes away or lost in stillbirth and abortion, then option A will be correct that yes, this second line is explaining first line correctly. Okay. So do remember it that the 10% is here. Let's do a simple question which come on this topic also. Suppose they say that live birth rate is 25 per thousand. This was a repeated question being asked previously in one of the exam. 25 per thousand is the live birth at a sub-center. And this sub-center is in plain area at 5,000 population, how many pregnancies should be registered in a year? How many pregnancy registered in a year? In a year. So to find this pregnancy in a year, there are two steps. Step one is, this live birth is, there are 25 live birth in 1,000 people. And total population is 5,000. First step is you have to find how much is the live birth. How much is the total live birth? So total live birth will be this 25 is in 1,000. 25 is for 1,000. So for 5,000, how much total live birth will occur? This 3, 0 will cancel out. 25 is in 1000, that means in 5000 live birth in a year will be 125. This is the live birth in a year. But question is not live birth in a year, question is pregnancy registered in a year. So pregnancy registered in a year will be calculated by the same steps which we discussed earlier that we will write live birth 
plus we will write 10 percent of live birth. This 10 percent of live birth is the pregnancy wastage factor which we are writing. So live birth is 125 plus 10 percent of 125. 10% of 125 will be 12.5. Ab ma saadhe bara bache ko to paida nahi karegi, aadha bache to nahi paida karegi. She cannot give birth to 0.5 child. So let's write 12.5 as 13 also. So it will come 137.5 or 138. This will be the pregnancy in a year. 138 was the answer to that question which came. But sometime they move one step ahead and they ask, if you as an MBBS doctor randomly visited the subcenter, then how many pregnancies should be present in ANM register? Now, in the ANM register, pregnancy are present only for six months because at the end of third month, first visit happened at 12 week and then nine month delivery will occur. So four month to nine month total six month only pregnancy remain in register. So if they ask pregnancy in a year, it is 138. But if they ask, let's say, not pregnancy in a year, if they ask pregnancy in ANM register at any time, pregnancy in register if they ask. So if they ask in register, then this time you have to divide yearly pregnancy with two. Because in the year, there are 12 months. प्रेगनेंसी केवल 6 महीने रजिस्टर होगी तो यानी जो साल की प्रेगनेंसी है उसकी आधी प्रेगनेंसी 12 का आधा 6 है यानी ना ना हाफ ऑफ 12 इज 6 सो ऑल द ईयरली प्रेगनेंसी इफ यू डिवाइड बाय 2 दैट विल कम द प्रेगनेंसी एट एनी टाइम इन एएनएम रजिस्टर सो इन ए ईयर वी कैन सी प्रेगनेंसी वाज 138 सो 138 इफ यू विल डिवाइड 138 बाय 2 then it will come pregnancy in register and that will be 138 by 269. So pregnancy in register will be half of yearly pregnancy. Okay. So if they ask register, you will divide it by half. These three steps can help you in solving this difficult type of question. Do remember it. Okay. What are the three steps? First step, whatever is the li live birth rate, multiply it with five you will get total live birth in a year. Second step, whatever the answer come, add 10% of that answer. This will be the total pregnancy in a year. Third step, if they ask pregnancy in ANM register, divide total live pregnancy by two and you will get pregnancy in ANM register at any time. Okay, so remember these steps. Coming to next question. Ayushman Bharat Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana Implementation. Is it done wholly by completely by central government or central and state government both contribute to it? Answer is both central and state government. That is why many states which are run by other government other than BJP government are not implementing Ayushman Bharat because around 60-70% come from central government but remaining 30 to 40 percent is given by state government, okay, roughly. And it all depends on the paying capacity of the state. And so do remember Ayushman Bharat under which there is PMJ. There are two things under Ayushman Bharat. One thing under Ayushman Bharat is PMJ. Jai Ho PM Ki. Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana in which 5 lakh rupees is given. 5 lakh rupees insurance is given, not money is given. Insurance card is given per year for economically weaker section, EWS family. EWS are those family which are earning less than 10,000 rupees per month. So this is PMJ. Second component is health and wellness center. This health and wellness center are the same thing as PHC subcenter, but they are saying that 1.5 lakh subcenter and some PHC will be updated to health and wellness center. And in this updation, what are the new facility that, we, they, that they will be given? The new facility that they will give is, one is ENT facility, second is dental facility, third is mental facility. 
along with that NCD facility like treatment of hypertension diabetes which is already being given will also be given and last but not the least yoga kyunki yoga se hoga so this is the four added extra thing they will give at sub center and they will change the name to health and wellness center and now school health program is also under ayushman bharat school health program come under phc vision center because phc do screening but it also come under ayushman bharat okay chalo next question all of the following are dashboard indicator for monitoring of impact of inap program india newborn action program is to decrease neonatal death in india and for this what are the impact indicator they have asked so let's see what are the impact indicator if you see this line the impact indicator are how many birth registration occurred then how many still birth occurred how many neonatal mortality occurred how many neonatal death is there when you compared it with under 5 death what is the survival rate of the newborn discharge from sncu and what is the cause specific neonatal mortality so basically they are relying on five thing how many birth are registered then how many still birth occurred how many early or neonatal death occurred how many children who were discharged from sncu survived and what is the reason of neonatal death and what is the percentage of neonatal death as compared to total under 5 death to panch cheeze hain so let's see out of these five you can say six total six birth rate still birth neonatal and early neonatal death cause of early neonatal and neonatal death how many discharge from sncu survive and ratio of neonatal death to under 5 death so six thing are there in inap program impact indicator please do remember it so out of this neonatal is given here in the option you can see so rest are not an impact indicator impact indicator of inap is neonatal death anyway india newborn action program is to decrease neonatal death so we will measure neonatal mortality rate hai na it is focusing on increasing bed capacity to decrease infant death in government hospital more beds should be there under this program so that less death of neonat occur yeah, so that's the new inap program now next question is which of the following are health education model so medical model is a health education model in which doctor give information to public this was the first model but it was found that doctor give information but that information is not accepted by patient unless the patient is motivated so in the motivation model there is three component one is awareness patient should be aware about that thing like suppose corona vaccination is one thing which doctor we are telling go and take covid vaccine but if the patient is aware that yes covid vaccine will save them and all it is available in market at this cost at this place then they will take it awareness is first second is this motivation itself how come motivation come when you think that there is a threat you can die due to covid or some serious infection can occur then you can motivated or when you see other people are doing it then you can get motivated and then after awareness and motivation action come and people go and bring the change so this is the three model awareness motivation action but then some other scientist come and they say no this is not sufficient a very new and recent model is also social intervention model social intervention model say that by changing what society is doing people behavior changes for example when many people in a village start taking corona vaccine then the remaining people will also go and take it for second example let's say people are spitting at different places in india people you know they they do gutka chewing and they spit it 
But if you will visit metro station all over India, in Delhi, not only in Delhi, other places also, there is not even single sputum in any area of metro station. Why? Because if you change the society, if you do the social intervention, if the government changes the system or society changes uh, themselves, then people will automatically get improved. Okay? So, we need not to just give education to the person. We also need to give education to the government and to the society because there is social intervention model also. So, these are the three model. Persuasion is not a model of health education. So, what is the correct answer? 1, 2 and 4 is the correct answer B. Okay, you can see it from the Park textbook itself. There is medical model, motivational model in which there is awareness, motivation and action. And, uh, and then there is social intervention model. Okay, these are the model of health education. Next question. Which of the following has two phases? First, simple pneumoconiosis respiratory lung disease. And second, progressive massive fibrosis, PMF. So, I was confused in this question myself also. So, I consulted Park. And Park said that it is none other than anthraconosis. Anthraconosis which occur in coal mine worker, coal factory worker, this can lead to first pneumoconiosis, then progressive massive fibrosis. Do remember, bagasosis, in NEET it is written that it was first occurred in cardboard factory worker, bagasosis. And that was the question in one of the exam, because we all know it is in sugarcane factory worker. But it also occur in cardboard factory worker, and the causative organism is, Thermoactinomycetes saccharii. Thermoactinomycetes saccharii. Saccharii means uh, the sugarcane. So, do remember they ask the causative organism also. Bicinosis is, of course, in cotton meal worker, jute meal worker, it occur. Siderosis occur in iron factory worker and all. Okay, but one more causative organism they ask is from farmer lung. In farmer lung, the causative organism is thermophilic fungus, micropolyspora fanny. So, micropolyspora fanny is causative organism here. Polyspora fanny. Do remember this causative organism. Microspora, polyspora fanny is there, which is a thermophilic heat loving fungus. And Thermoactinomycetes is here. Okay. Now let's see it here also written that anthraconosis, the first is simple pneumoconiosis, and then second is progressive massive fibrosis PMF. So these are the two stages of anthraconosis. Do remember in silicosis, which is the most common respiratory occupational disease, there is a snowstorm appearance in silicosis. If you look at the x-ray, there will be fumes on the x-ray. So that will be the snowstorm appearance on uh, silicosis on x-ray and it is also progressive but it resembles TB. That's why every silicosis patient should be annually screened for TB. Okay and then if you look uh, this part progressive massive and simple pneumoconiosis is with anthraconosis. Chalo. Consider the following statement about correlation between two variable. The correlation is done between an independent variable x and a dependent variable y. This is correct. Let's say we are trying to draw between number of uh, joint per day which you smoke or number of drink per day with marks. That how much marks is affected when you increase the number of joint how much marks is affected so this is x variable we know how many joint you are smoking or your friend is smoking now you want to know that due to increasing number of joint how much the marks is decreasing so marks is on y axis marks is something which is dependent on x marks is dependent on number of joint per day so y is the dependent variable marks है ना नंबर निर्भर करता है कि आप कितना दारू पी रहे हैं कितना ज्वाइंट फूंक रहे हैं सो so, नंबर 
कैसा है निर्भर करने वाला डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल है मार्क्स इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन नंबर ऑफ ज्वाइंट सो मार्क्स इज वाई एक्स इज डिपेंडेंट एक्स इज नंबर ऑफ ज्वाइंट दैट इज इनडिपेंडेंट सो स्टेटमेंट वन इज डेफिनेटली राइट स्टेटमेंट टू कॉफिशियंट ऑफ कॉरलेशन कैन रेंज फ्रॉम माइनस वन टू इनफाइनाइट नो कॉफिशियंट ऑफ कॉरलेशन कैन रेंज फ्रॉम माइनस वन टू प्लस वन इट कैन गो टिल माइनस वन टू प्लस वन ओनली इफ आई राइट प्लस वन पॉइंट टू एज कोरलेशन कॉफिशियंट वन पॉइंट टू मीन्स रॉन्ग डेटा दिस इज नॉट करेक्ट डेटा ओके सो स्टेटमेंट टू इज रॉन्ग इट इज नॉट माइनस वन टू इनफाइनाइट इट इज माइनस वन टू प्लस वन सो दैट मीन्स वन इज राइट एंड टू इज रॉन्ग so we can rule out option 4 we can rule out option b also okay now let's look at there is no use of looking at 3 because that is ruled out but we can if you want and we can directly look at 4 also 4 is correlation does not necessarily prove causation this is 100% correct line what does it mean it means that if two things are happening together it doesn't mean that one is causing the other for example let's say your room partner fall in love with someone and since your room partner has fallen in love the marks of your room partner is increasing so you and your friends uh, your friends they are thinking that marks is increasing due to love but you being the room partner you know the reality that since your room partner has fallen in love he stopped watching all those uh, um, all those uh, uh, movies on netflix web series and all those things he stopped watching and he is giving that time on study so the marks is not increasing due to love marks is increasing due to more hour of study and so if two thing happen together it does not mean one is causing other let me give you a clinical example in india vaccination rate of corona is going up and corona cases are going low so the government is saying due to high vaccination cases are low but we have seen in america in uk in seychelles and israel four country and in china five country after 90% vaccination second wave of corona came so that means vaccination is not preventing from corona wave that means two things are correlated high vaccination and low case but low cases are not caused due to high vaccination correlation does not necessarily prove causation okay na case bhi kam ho rahe hain vaccination bhi badh raha hai lekin zaruri nahi hai ki ye iski wajah se ho raha ho it may be that there is a natural mutation in the virus which is causing virus to be more infective and less lethal so we are not able to know how much corona is spreading because now it is less lethal more infective okay maybe chalo so do remember and the third line if you look see they are saying coefficient of correlation is equal to 1 it indicate there is no association between x and y no 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 if correlation coefficient is 1 it means there is a perfect linear association and on this type suppose i am giving two plot one is this dots are far apart one is this dots are exactly on central line so if they are exactly on central line then their correlation coefficient is 1 and it is a stronger association but if i draw this type of dots which are far apart then correlation coefficient will be less it will be around 0.8 or 0.9 here so the far dots are there less is the correlation coefficient more the dots are closer more is the more is the correlation coefficient okay do remember this part now so correct answer we have already done this is some detail about this all things let's come to lead poisoning and discuss it with regard to lead poisoning which is correct so first thing is focus here most common route they have asked in neat exam most common route of lead poisoning is it ingestion inhalation so it is clearly written inhalation is the most common route remember we inhale it that is the most common route of lead poisoning now second point coproporphyrin in urine is a useful screening test this is also correct we can use coproporphyrin as a screening test hand washing before eating is an important major this is also correct we should because um, lead is present in many pipe uh, made of lead and water going through that pipe it is present in as environmental contamination also in lead factory workers and all 
So lead is used in multiple factories also, like batteries and all those factory. So we should keep washing hand if you are working in lead factory, that will prevent infection. Second is also correct. Third line, use of depensilamine has been reported to be effective management. Yes, depensilamine is an effective major. Second drug which we can give is ethylene diamine tetraacetate EDTA. So we can give EDTA, but depensilamine is an effective major. So that means how many are correct? All three are correct. All three are correct. Okay. Now, let's see these lines from the park directly. If you can see, they have written it in clearly that use of depensilamine, use of depensilamine is affected with, is associated with higher uh, is effective. So they have written D-pencilamine is effective and they can use calcium EDT, EDTA as a chelating agent also. Now, uh, second point was that should we do hand washing? So again, you can see here it is written that hand washing before eating is an important measure of personal hygiene. So this is also correct. D-pencilamine, hand washing. Then the point of using uh, coproporphyrin in urine, if you can see, this is there. Coproporphyrin is urine, CPU in urine is useful screening test. The level of CPU should be less than 150 microgram. Second test al along with coproporphyrin we can use is aminolevelenic acid in urine. If aminolevelenic acid is more than 5, it is directly proving lead absorption is high. So ALA more than 5 and coproporphyrin more than 150 indicate lead poisoning. Second is we can measure lead in blood and urine also. So these all are written here and uh, I will definitely try to share all these uh, images and slides with all of you. You can, uh, so that you can read this topic in detail, okay. And uh, you can contact on Allen app also, Allen Next app also, these things. Uh, will be uploaded on Allen next telegram. We have done this lead poisoning thing. Next question is that a water body was inspected to look for presence of mosquito egg. It was found that there was boat shaped egg. Boat shaped egg is not in cluster, it is single. And which disease is there? So remember, A for Aedes, A for Anopheles, both are from A na, or A ka matlab kya hota hai? A means alone, akela. So Aedes Anopheles egg are single. And C is for Culex, C is for cluster. So Culex egg is in cluster. Now, have you went to Rishikesh or other places for river rafting? And I also went there, but the water was so cold ki I got scared and did not did it. But if you have ever done river rafting, have you done it alone? Or have you done it in cluster or group of people? Of course, you cannot go alone on river rafting, you need cluster. So Culex is in cluster and rafting whenever we do. Rafting is also done in cluster. So that's why which egg is raft shaped? Culex egg are raft shaped. Okay. Now, Aedes is single egg and it is cigar shaped. Aedes is cigar shaped. Have you ever seen someone smoking two cigars together? No, no, cigar can always be single. So it is single cigar. And then anophilus is boat shaped. Why it is boat shaped? Because it has lateral floats. It is lateral floats. Lateral floats means you understand? Chappu hota hai na? That there is also kayoking which we do. So that kayoking or boating have this lateral float in it and due to that lateral float 
anophilus egg is boat shaped and which disease is transmitted by anophilus malaria so malaria is transmitted by anophilus they are talking about boat shaped egg which is for anophilus remember boat anophilus cigar aedes raft esculex anophilus aedes egg are a for alone aquila single culex egg are in cluster one last thing i want to tell you is that anophilus larva sometimes they can give image or ask about it anophilus larva float parallel to water surface parallel means anophilus larva if this is the water anophilus larva will be something here like this on this water surface parallel not hanging down because the breathing tube of anophilus is very small so anophilus has to come on the surface to breathe and that's why anophilus is surface feeder whereas aedes and culex are bottom feeder surface feeder anophilus larva parallel to water surface anophilus larva spotted wing are found in anophilus aedes don't have a spotted wing and who is the sophisticated mosquito anophilus okay how will you identify anophilus anophilus is the sophisticated mosquito it maintain an angle of 45 degree so that's where you can always easily identify anophilus remember spotted wing anophilus cha next question so this is all the detail i am saying it's being written here also in part remember anophilan larva rest parallel to water surface okay not hang it is single and boat shaped okay cha in the national health policy for hiv aids program 1990 90 target is given so what are the things in 1990 target they are asking so this 1990 90 is not only for hiv this is also for tb let's learn what is 1990 90, 90 very simple first is that the case detection rate whether it's tb or it's hiv first 90 is the case detection rate case detection rate should be 90% for both hiv and tb case detection rate 90% last 90 is also common for tb or hiv both of them the last 90 means that of all the patient who are getting the treatment of tb and hiv 90% of the patient should have viral suppression 90% logo par dawai kaam karni chahiye bimari control mein honi chahiye this last 90 is same that 90% patient on treatment are adequately treated have disease under control have disease under control okay now the difference between this 90 90 is in the middle one because hiv the main problem is that after you a person is detected as hiv positive the person gets so scared he they know that there is no permanent treatment so they run away they do not come for treatment hiv mein bhag jate hain wo so the second target for hiv is that 90% of people who are hiv positive who are detected of hiv 90% of detected hiv case detected hiv case should be on art इनकी दवाई चालू हो जाए जिनको पॉजिटिव आ गया है उनकी बस दवाई चालू हो जाए तो भी हमारा एच का 90 परसेंट हो जाएगा बट इन टी बी है ना हेयर वी जस्ट वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट द ट्रीटमेंट बट इन टी बी द मेन कंसर्न इज दैट देर आर मेनी पीपल हु आर नॉट टेस्टेड फॉर टी बी लाइक पीपल लिविंग इन रिफ्यूजी कैंप पीपल लिविंग इन प्रिजन पीपल लिविंग इन हॉट स्पॉट फॉर एच आई एंड ऑल they are vulnerable and oppressed people or marginalized people so for tb this 90% is that 90% of vulnerable and marginalized population should be tested vulnerable population tested for tb okay to dono 90 90 90 yaad rahega 
टीबी और एचआईवी दोनों में पहला और आखिरी 90 ये कहता है केस डिटेक्शन रेट और ट्रीटमेंट सक्सेस रेट 90-90 परसेंट होना चाहिए फर्स्ट एंड लास्ट 90 इज केस डिटेक्शन रेट ट्रीटमेंट सक्सेस रेट बोथ एच आई टीबी मिडिल वन फॉर टीबी इज नाइनटी ऑफ वलरेबल पॉपुलेशन शुड बी टेस्टेड एंड फॉर एच आई मिडिल वन इज नाइनटी ऑफ पेशेंट हु केम पॉजिटिव ऑन एच टेस्ट शुड बी ऑन ड्रग ओके okay, दवाई चलनी चाहिए और यहां टेस्ट होना चाहिए सो दिस आर द टू नाइनटी 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 आई होप यू विल रिमेम्बर इट बोथ सो लेट्स कम बैक एंड डिस्कस इट हियर व्हाट इज दिस नाइनटी 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 प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ कपल हु हैव सेफ सेक्स नो आई दिस इज नॉट ए टारगेट ऑफ नाइनटी 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 प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ पीपल लिविंग विथ एच आई वी नो देअर एच स्टेटस यस This is first 90 case detection rate should be 90 percent. 90 percent लोगों को पता होना चाहिए कि उनको एच आई वी है केस डिटेक्शन रेट नाइनटी परसेंट प्रोपोर्शन ऑफ एडोलसेंट हुव एक्सेस टू कॉन्ट्रासेप्टिव नो नाइनटीन नाइनटी नाइनटी हैजो टारगेट ऑन एडोलसेंट Proportion of people receiving antiretroviral therapy who have viral suppression. So this is the last 90 viral suppression case detection. Middle 90 was 90% परसेंट ऑफ पेशेंट हु वेयर डिटेक्टेड पॉजिटिव शुड बी ऑन एच आई वी ड्रग सो फर्स्ट सेकेंड एंड फोर्थ इज राइट ऑप्शन डी इज करेक्ट सेकेंड एंड फोर्थ इज राइट ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन सैंपल रजिस्ट्रेशन सिस्टम द इंपॉर्टेंट सेल्स ऑफ इन हेल्थ फॉर्मेशन कंसिस्ट ऑफ कंटिन्यूअस रिन्यूमरेशन ऑफ बर्थ एंड डेथ बाई एन इन्यूमरेटर एंड इंडिपेंडेंट सर्वे एवरी सिक्स मंथ बाई इन्वेस्टिगेटर What is happening here? पहली बार आशा या हेल्थ वर्कर गांव में जाएंगे और घर घर जाके डेटा लेंगे छह महीने बाद एक सुपरवाइजर फिर से जाएगा और फिर से डेटा कलेक्ट करेगा फिर दोनों के डेटा को क्रॉस चेक किया जाएगा कि कहीं कोई डेटा छूट तो नहीं गया कहीं कोई डेटा डबल तो नहीं रिकॉर्ड हुआ कहीं कोई डेटा गलती से रिकॉर्ड तो नहीं हुआ और फिर फाइनल डेटा हर छह महीने पर रिलीज होगा तो इसलिए इसमें चांस है कि गलतियां कम होंगी और आप यहां देख सकते हो कि पहली बार आशा ने खोजा फिर सुपरवाइजर ने फिर से डेटा निकाला तो दो बार डेटा निकाला तो दो बार डेटा निकाला इसीलिए एसआरएस को क्या कहते हैं डबल डेटा रिकॉर्डिंग सिस्टम डुअल रिकॉर्ड सिस्टम आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू इन द फर्स्ट स्टेप सम आशा और फील्ड वर्कर इज रिकॉर्डिंग डेटा देन आफ्टर सिक्स मंथ सम सुपरवाइजर इज रिकॉर्डिंग इट अगेन एंड देन दे आर क्रॉस चेकिंग अबाउट द डेटा करेक्टनेस and every 6 month they are releasing the document of srs so you can see the data is collected twice so it is dual data recording main thing you have to know is that what are the data which come from srs so this is dual data i hope it is clear now srs give data on birth rate death rate IMR, infant mortality rate, MMR. This data come from sample registration system, dual data recording method. And do remember, birth and death under the Birth and Death Registration Act, they are reported within twenty one day, and they are reported to PHC. But marriages, marriages are reported at sub center register. so marriage at sub center birth death at phc second point which data reporting system tell us about immunization data or breast feeding data or domestic violence data or anemia and iodine deficiency data so immunization breast feeding anemia domestic violence all this data come from नेशनल फैमिली हेल्थ सर्वे और डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल हेल्थ सर्वे सो डी एल एच एस एंड एन एफ एच एस गिव डेटा ऑन दीज थिंग्स सेंसस डू रिमेंबर दिस थिंग दैट सेंसस ऑकर एवरी टेन ईयर एंड इट डज नॉट गिव डेथ डेटा सेंसस टेल नथिंग अबाउट डेथ सेंसस गिव डेटा ऑन सेक्स रेशियो हाउ मेनी फीमेल्स आर देयर एज कंपेयर टू थाउजेंड मेल्स census give data about socio economic status of the family it give data on the caste distribution in india but it do not give any data on death census do not report death 
So do re remember this deep voting. They ask these questions again and again. Next question. Crossover type of study design are those in which patients serve as their own control. In which of the following crossover is not suitable? Okay. So let's understand it with an example. Otherwise, it's very difficult to understand. You know that a lot of students take morphine or amphetamine group of drugs before exam to enhance their performance and all those things. But does it actually work? You want to know does morphine actually help us in performing well or not? How can you know it? To know that thing, you can take some 200 student, your friend, and ask them to choose from chit A or B. That means you are randomly allocating to two group A or B. Random allocation is being done. Those who choose chit A will not get any drug, will get only placebo. Junjuna, some lemchus. And group B will get, suppose, the drug modafinil. Okay. Now, after giving them the medicines, you can observe them. Let's say you did follow up for three months, you gave them the drug. And in this three months, you measured them. Ki what is the hour of study per week? Ghanta kitna padha har hafte. Hour of study per week. In both the group, you measured hour of study per week. Okay. This is first part of crossover RCT. This is just like parallel RCT. They are going parallel. But in the next part, what we usually do is, first, we do not do anything for some time. For next six months, you will not give them any medicine and you will not let them take any medicine. So this is known as washout time of six months, in which the drug will be flushed out from the urinary system, was out time. Then, after giving was out time, what we do is, in group A, now we can give the drug modafinil. And in group B, now we can give the placebo. And then again, we will see in future, which has more hours of study, we will again compare their hours in both the group. So what is happening here? We are crossing over, changing the treatment. Placebo is now here. Modafinil is now here. So we cross the treatment. This is crossover RCT. And you can see in crossover RCT, group A first get placebo. So first they are control. And after some time they get the drug. So all the participant they act as their own control. They get medicine sometime and then act as control or they act as control and then they get medicine. So this is what written in the definition. Both group of participant, they act as their own control. Now tell me, all the corona vaccine trial which was done in India or out of India also, was the corona vaccine trial was a parallel RCT or a crossover RCT? कैसे किया था कोरोना वैक्सीन ट्रायल पहले ये बताइए किस में टाइम ज्यादा लगेगा दिस हाफ पार्ट इज पैरेलल एंड दिस फुल पार्ट आफ्टर वॉश आउट एंड ऑल इज क्रॉसओवर सो वी कैन सी इट पैरेलल आरसीटी टेक लेस टाइम क्रॉसओवर टेक मोर टाइम एंड ऑफ कोर्स इन कोरोना वी डोंट हैव टाइम सो ऑल द कोरोना वैक्सीन ट्रायल वाज पैरेलल आरसीटी एंड देयर इज टू रीजन फॉर दैट फर्स्ट रीजन इज that in corona vaccine, we cannot have washout time. It's not that after taking vaccine, you went to washroom, you did susu and corona vaccine flushed out. It is not possible. So washout is not possible with corona vaccine. So if any disease, we cannot like, it's not that the drug got flushed out and our antibody get flushed out. So we cannot do crossover on those things. That's why all vaccination trials are just parallel RCT. Okay. Second thing, if suppose the patient dies or the disease is very lethal, then again we cannot do crossover. Let's say someone is having Ebola. So when you will treat, if you will treat properly, Ebola will get treated in half part only. 
Now you cannot do research on that. So we cannot do crossover RCT if the effect cannot be flushed out or if the disease is very lethal, we cannot do crossover RCT. Okay, so let's see what are the options of that question. Yes, first thing is if the drug of interest cure the disease, if the medicine, let's say modafinil, cure the study problem forever, or if suppose it increases study hour forever in your life, then next time giving placebo will have no effect. Like I was giving example of Ebola, that was more correct here. One time you give the treatment and Ebola will be cure. After Ebola is cure, now the patient will not come back for the study. So there is no second half. We cannot do crossover if the drug is treating the illness. Okay. If the drug is effective during all stage, then we can do it. Because some stage we give it, some stage we give placebo. So we can do it if it is effective during all stage. But if the disease changes radically during the period of time, if initially disease was mild and after some time disease becomes severe, so we cannot compare mild case with severe directly now. So in this case also we cannot do crossover. In this case also we cannot do crossover. We cannot do crossover if drug cannot be washed out. We cannot do crossover if disease is lethal. We cannot do crossover if disease get cured by the drug easily. And fourth case we cannot do crossover if disease changes radically during the period okay we can do crossover if drug is effective in all stage and if medicine can be flushed out so correct answer is only two b two only next question which food protein among the following are considered to be the best and used as reference protein which protein can be used as reference protein so reference protein are those protein which has all the amino acid and animal protein are reference protein because they are not deficient in amino acids. Okay. So that's why the correct answer is egg protein because it has egg has all the protein. What are the protein missing in pulses? They can ask missing missing amino acid in pulses. Pulses, you can remember by the mnemonic MC. And my batchmate Monica Chaudhary. M stands for methionine and C stands for cysteine. Two things are lacking in pulses. Methionine is not there and cysteine is not there. Two things are not there. Okay. In wheat or any other like rice and all, again two things is lacking. One is lysine. And other is therionine. But the most common thing they ask is from the mage. If you will see, pellagra occur mostly in USA because in USA people eat mage more. And mage diet is deficient in two things. Again, lysine is common here. Lysine is in wheat or cereals also. Lysine is deficient in mage also. Plus, there is tryptophan deficiency, which lead to pellagra, dermatitis, dementia, diarrhea, and death, and castle neck appearance. All of this occurred due to niacin deficiency in pellagra, being asked again and again in recent NEET and FMG exam both. So, do remember about pellagra, which occurred due to maize diet, which is deficient in tryptophan. So, lysine, tryptophan in mage, lysine, therionine. So, you can see TT is there, tryptophan in mage. Therionine in wheat, T and T, and lysine is common. And who do not eat pulses? Pulses is deficient in which amino acid? MC, methionine cysteine. Monica Chaudhary do not eat pulses. Eh, methionine cysteine are deficient in pulses. Sorry. C eat pulses, so it is deficient. Methionine cysteine are deficient in pulses. Lysine therionine in wheat and other cereals. And lysine and tryptophan in mage. So, which is a reference or complete protein? Egg. Anyway, egg has highest net protein utilization also. So that's why also we use egg as reference protein. Next question, which is correct about trans fatty acid? First line, they are geometrical isomer of cis unsaturated fatty acid. This look correct. 
थ्रू एथ्रोजेनिक बींग अनसेचुरेटेड दे आर लेस सो दैट सेचुरेटेड दे आर सेंग दैट ट्रांस फैटी एसिड इज लेस डेंजरस दैन सेचुरेटेड फैट दिस इज टोटली रॉन्ग मोस्टली when we deep fry anything when we use the oil again and again then we create trans fatty acid and trans fatty acid is more dangerous than saturated fat it is more dangerous than ghee and dalda also so this statement is wrong they are saying they are less less is wrong they are more okay third line it takes years for trans fatty acid to be flushed out this is also correct because it is dangerous it is flushed out very slowly last they lower both ldl and hdl no they lower hdl because hdl is the good lipid so lower hdl but they do not lower ldl they increase ldl and a low density lipoprotein is increased by it and high density lipoprotein is decreased by trans fatty acid so correct statement is 1 and 3 1 and 3 b is correct Okay, let's see this line from Park directly. <clears throat> this trans fatty acid are geometrical isomer of cis, clearly written unsaturated fatty acid. Then, uh, next thing they are saying is they are the trans fatty acid is more arthrogenic than saturated fatty acid. They are more dangerous. Clearly written. they are not only elevate ldl but also decrease hdl so they don't elevate both they increase ldl decrease hdl and it increases the risk of coronary heart artery disease it takes year of trans fatty acid to be flushed out from the body so this time in this cms exam a lot of question came direct line by line from park but you can answer it if you have some basic knowledge some question can be solved by that but some question were really tough okay so this can be solved from there and do remember one thing which i want to tell you and i want to remind myself also that deep fried fast food cake energy bar uh, chips cracks and whipped topping packed cookies pies cakes they are the major source of trans fatty acid okay so do not eat all those things next which of the following disorders occur as a part of a spectrum of iodine deficiency disorder out of these four what all things occur in iodine deficiency so iodine deficiency disorder of course it lead to cretinism and uh, of course hypothyroidism so it lead to delayed motor milestone that's okay extra pyramidal spasticity i was not aware of that so i consulted park and i found that yes extra pyramidal spasticity was also due to iodine okay then hearing defect can also occur due to iodine deficiency nyctalopia do not occur due to iodine deficiency so the correct answer is 1 2 and 4 which is option d 1 2 and 4 okay let's see it directly from park so it can lead to delayed motor milestone you can see it here it can lead to spasticity which will be extra pyramidal you can see that delayed motor milestone mental deficiency will also be there and hearing defect will also be there so hearing speech defect delayed motor milestone spasticity all will be there intrauterine death can also occur but nyctalopia do not occur with iodine deficiency okay do use this table it is useful next question regarding occupational cancer which statement is correct or wrong you have to say which is correct they are asking first skin cancer is a common is not just common it is most common cancer skin cancer is most common occupational cancer around 70% of all cancer which are occupational is skin cancer mostly but they are written it is in worker employed in nickel and chromium work no 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 it has nothing to do in nickel and chromium work skin cancer occur in all kind of uh, uh, exposures wherever there is high heat and uh, like uh, you know so uh, coal tar factory and all those skin cancer is common not only in nickel chromium anyway cancer bladder is an occupational hazard in worker employed in dye stuff and dyeing industry this is correct 
कैंसर ब्लैडर ऑकर इन एनिलीन डाई इंडस्ट्री एंड ऑल सो वेर एवर यू फाइंड डाई इंडस्ट्री एनिलीन एंसर कैंसर ब्लैडर थर्ड ल्यूकेमिया कैन ऑकर विथ लॉन्ग एक्सपोजर टू बेंजोल दिस इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट फोर्थ लंग कैंसर इज टिपिकली फाउंड इन वर्कर इन इलेक्ट्रिक केबल इंडस्ट्री नो लंग कैंसर इन ऑल द फैक्ट्री इंडस्ट्री एंड इवन सिलीकोसिस कैन कॉज लंग कैंसर एसबेस्टोसिस कॉज मेसोथेलियोमा टाइप ऑफ लंग कैंसर सो इट्स नॉट ओनली इन इलेक्ट्रिक केबल इंडस्ट्री ऑल्सो फोर इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग दैट मीन्स टू एंड थ्री आर डेफिनेटली राइट सो एंसर इज बी टू एंड थ्री लेट्स चेक दिस आउट थ्रू पार्क डायरेक्टली वट दे आर सेंग स्किन कैंसर सी इट फर्स्ट थिंग इज दे हैव फाउंड इट इन स्क्रॉटम ऑफ इन चिमनी वाइपर सो चिमनी कोल्ड टार फैक्ट्री चिमनी वाइपर दे हैव दिस स्क्रॉटल कैंसर वेरी कॉमनली डू रिमेंबर इट सेकेंड थिंग दे से दैट ओके आउट ऑफ आफ्टर स्क्रॉटम कैंसर दे आर सेंग दैट इट इज ऑल्सो ऑकर ड्यू टू एक्स रे यूज सर्टेन ऑयल एंड डाई एंड इट इज नियरली सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ ऑल ऑक्यूपेशनल कैंसर इज स्किन कैंसर ओके so it they have not written anything about nickel or chromium it can occur in oil industry pitch tar industry uh, dye stuff refinery distillery anywhere now lung cancer again lung cancer is something which is common in nickel and chromium so when they talked nickel and chromium in place of skin cancer they should have written lung cancer and lung cancer is not with electric cable user that they said electric cable is not written anywhere in lung cancer it is with asbestos use coal tar use radioactive use and all those things so nickel chromium will have lung cancer coal tar and all will have scrotal cancer they can also have lung cancer bladder cancer is clearly written is noted in man in aniline industry or dye industry so bladder cancer with dye industry aniline industry and leukemia written exposure to benzol lead to leukemia do remember this four point being asked repeatedly again and again so these are important areas now and let's move to next question which of the following are domains of learning for learning there is affective learning cognitive learning psychomotor learning but no physiological learning is there what do you mean by these three thing affective cognitive psychomotor are the three learning 1 2 4 1 2 that means d there is no physiological learning affective learning means let's see it uh, they are saying cognitive level means you are increasing the knowledge this is cognitive like i am giving you this knowledge this question which we usually don't do so i am giving you cognitive knowledge and you are doing cognitive learning right now second is it can also be effective in term of changing existing pattern of behavior and attitude when i am giving you this line from park maybe next time you started reading park in place of just mcq books suppose so now your behavior is changed now it is affecting you affective learning and then there is psychomotor learning which you know in terms of acquiring new skill okay and it's very simple like uh, suppose i gave information to asa and health worker or intern also that when you are giving injection to newborn child we are usually very soft hearted when we are in turn so we just insert the tip and push the vaccine which can lead to formation of abscess so what i am telling you is do not just insert tip of needle take the flap of thigh of child in your hand and insert the full needle inside then only push the vaccine okay this will not lead to formation of abscess take the full flap insert full needle only then push okay so what i told you is cognitive knowledge now due to this knowledge whenever you will give vaccine you will take the flap and you will not think of the pain of the child you will insert full needle on only then you will push so this is cog affective affecting your behavior so affective and how you know it by acquiring new skill that is psychomotor you did it yourself and then you acquired that yes this is not causing formation of abscess when i am inserting full needle inside 
So this is psychomotor which you learned by doing it. Okay, so effective cognitive psychomotor, I hope it is clear to you, do remember it. Next question, in ICDS scheme, which do not come to Anganwadi? So of course children less than 6 years come, pregnant woman, adolescent girl come, but adolescent boy do not come to Anganwadi. Why adolescent boy do not come to Anganwadi? Because villager think, if adolescent boy and girl both came to Anganwadi, they will make Anganwadi Tinderwadi. So they separate adolescent boy and girl. Don't let them come there. Adolescent boys do not come to Anganwadi. So who come 2, 3 and 4? That means D is correct. 2, 3, 4. Okay. Next question. Which of the following correctly represent the three critical determinants of health facility declared as first referral unit? So for FRU, you must have emergency obstetric care you must have blood facility and you must have facility for newborn care, newborn resuscitation. Immunization is not necessary for calling yourself secondary level health facility like CHC. FRU is lesser than CHC. So FRU, CHC, district hospital. These three are secondary level. Primary level is sub-center and PHC. So at secondary level, that means at FRU, CHC, district hospital, at least three things should be there. Newborn care, emergency c-section and if you are doing emergency cesarean you must need blood for transfusion so blood transfusion emergency cesarean newborn care should be there not two so that means one three and four should be there b is correct okay next question is uh, from our national immunization schedule they are just asking what is the order of giving vaccines of course we all know bcg we give 0 0.05 ml at birth if it is given after one month, then the dose is 0.1 ml. Till first month, it is half 0.05 ml intradermally on left deltoid. So this is the first BCG is first, of course. That means only A or B can be correct. After BCG, at 6, 10 and 14 week, we give rotavirus. So third is the second. We need not to go further. Answer is B. 1, 3, 2, 4. Anyway, let's see other also. J is given at 9 month and DT vaccine, this came in NEET exam also that at 10 year and 16 year which vaccine is given. So 10 and 16 year we are giving DT, TT nahi, DT, diphtheria tetanus both. So of course you can see 1, then 3, then 2, then 4, 1, 3, 2, 4 is option B. So that is correct. And remember in BCG the diluent is normal saline. Now this is about national leprosy program and they are asking which activity is done by ASA. Now they are saying what is the correct activity done by ASA. So first thing is ASA search for suspected case of leprosy. They definitely search and if they found new case they will report it to higher authority and they will get 250 rupees for reporting new cases. Okay. If they report any case which already have disability or amputation, then they will get 200 rupees. If they report fresh new case without amputation or disability, 250 rupees. So ASA do report for sure. So one is correct. That means 2, 3 and 3, 4 option are ruled out. Because one is correct for sure. Okay. Now let's look at two. ASA arrange amount of 5,000. How come ASA arrange amount? <laughs> ASA itself is getting money only when she work. There is no monthly salary for ASA. So ASA cannot arrange amount. This is given by government. And we give 5000 rupees. This is correct. But if someone has undergone amputation, then they get 8000 rupees. For reconstructive surgery, 5000. After amputation, 8000. Third point. ASA ensure that each day leprosy person affected in their village receive microcellular footwear. How can ASA assure that they are getting footwear? ASA help in reporting of cases and referral of cases. She cannot ensure the facility is given to patient. But the last option saying ASA follow up cases and ensure that treatment is complete. This is definitely work of ASA. So just by common sense that ASA main work is finding case and reporting case. You can say 1 and 4 is correct. 
So if one and four is correct, option C is correct. Okay. ASA do not collect money for it and ASA do not give microcellular rubber footwear, although they are in the program, but this is not the work of ASA. Let's see about this program. I have written the things in detail. As I was saying, if you can see, 8,000 rupees is provided as incentive if the person is from BPL family and undergoing reconstructive surgery. Support is also provided in government institution in the form of 5,000 rupees if reconstructive surgery conducted. So this is the money given to them. Then on confirmed diagnosis of case, ASA get 250 rupees. On completion of case, for posse bacillary ASA get 400. For multi bacillary ASA get 600. Okay, 250 for reporting, 400 and 600 for posse and multi bacillary leprosy. Okay, on completion of treatment. Next question. Which of the following is defined as average number of child a woman should have during her life birth if she passes through current fertility pattern? So if they ask total life birth one female, that is total fertility rate. So answer is total fertility rate, total life birth one female. If they ask total life birth per thousand female, so if they use the word thousand, then it will become general fertility rate. And if they say total girl child per female, that is gross reproduction rate. Total girl child per female or girl life birth per female. But out of all the girl life birth which occur, some girl will also die. Definitely. Before they become adult, they can die. So if we are subtracting those girl child who died after birth, after subtracting, it will become net reproduction rate. So net reproduction rate means girl child per female considering age specific mortality rate, considering those who died. Okay. So the here the answer is TFR, but whenever they use the word girl, then TFR, GFR cannot be the answer. If girl is written, then NRR and GRR can only be the answer. And if they have used the word mortality, then answer and girl, child and mortality, then answer is definitely NRR. So with this, you can easily identify the answers. Okay. Next question, which is correct about yellow fever vaccination requirement for traveler? This was a tough question. The first line is saying that term of validity of the certificate is changed from 10 year to duration of life. Yes, this is correct. Now, previously it was for 10 year. Now it is lifelong. So this is correct statement. Second, lifetime validity of the certificate apply automatically to all existing and new certificate. Yes. Because now whoever has taken it in past also, vaccine is same, only that previously it was 10 year efficacious, now it is lifetime protective. So it can automatically change. Validity of the certificate begin four day, no, no, no. It begin 10 day after vaccination, 10 day to lifelong. After vaccination, 10 day it begins, so C is wrong. In India, booster dose of yellow fever is required for those who certificate is prior to 20. No booster dose is needed. So C and D is wrong. 1 and 2 is correct. That means the correct answer is 1 and 2. <clears throat> Let's see it directly from the horse mouth, directly from the book. They are saying that the term of, if you can see, focus here, that the validity of the certificate on 11th July 2016, it is changed that uh, lifetime validity apply automatically to all existing and new certificates. Okay. Beginning 10 day after the date of vaccination. So lifetime is there to all existing and old and for 10 day. So this line will express all the things which is there, which we were discussing. And uh, I hope this is clear to you. And uh, it is also written, you can see here in India, Lifetime validity of yellow fever vaccination applies automatically. So when there is lifetime validity, yeah, if you can see this part, when there is lifetime validity, there is no need of booster dose. Yeah, so yellow fever 
lifetime validity, 10 day after vaccination, it is start working and there is no need of booster dose. It protect 10 day to lifelong. Okay. Sure. Next question. For typhoid vaccine, they are saying which is correct. Option A, the typhoid polysaccharide vaccine is injectable and can be given subcutaneously or IM. This is right. Typhoid vaccine are two type. Oral typhoid vaccine, typhoral, which is given on day 1, 3 and 5. Kaun kaun se din? Aaj, parso, narso. And now 1, 3, 5 we give oral typhoral live vaccine. Polysaccharide vaccine is given as one dose and then booster of polysaccharide vaccine is given every three year. So, typhoid polysaccharide is can be given subcutaneously or intramuscularly. This is right. Typhoid polysaccharide vaccine is required to be given two dose. No, no, no. Polysaccharide is given as one dose. Booster is given every three dose. So, this is wrong. Typhoid oral vaccine required to be given in three doses on day 0, 3 and 7. Oh, ho, ho. 0, 3 and 5, not on 7. This is also wrong. Last line, protective immunity with typhoid vaccine is achieved immediately after vaccine is received. No, no, no. Not in any vaccine, immunity do not come immediately. It takes some day. In typhoid vaccine, after getting the last dose, it takes next 7 day to develop immunity. So it is not, if anywhere they are writing, write, writing that immunity achieved immediately, that trine is definitely wrong. Immediately, no vaccine can give immunity. There is one vaccine, measles vaccine, which give immunity in 7 day. And symptom of measles appear on 10 to 14 day. So, in measles vaccination, bimari ke aane se pehle, Sipahi tayar ho jate, antibody tayar ho jate. In measles case, before disease appear, immunity is there. But still in measles also, it takes 7 days after vaccination to develop immunity. Okay. So do remember, measles is a special vaccine for that case. So which of the following is correct? First correct is, typhoid is injectable, can be given. Other than that, no, no nothing is correct. So only one is correct here. All three are wrong. I hope this is clear to you. Let's see this directly from here. If you see VI polysaccharide vaccine, this VI polysaccharide vaccine is administrated, you can see is written subcutaneously or intramuscularly. So this part is right, subcutaneously or intramuscularly. Now, the target value each dose is 25 and it is given till two year. And the VI vaccine does not elicit adequate response in children age less than two year. Vaccine is licensed, age more than two year only get uh, polysaccharide and only one dose of VI polysaccharide is given and the vaccine confer protection seven day after injection. So it's clear one dose, not immediately after seven day and one dose which can be given SC or IM both. Second thing, if you look at the TI21 vaccine, for TI21 vaccine, they are saying that the three doses which is here, if you can see, the three doses are on day 1, 3 and 5 day. 1, 3 and 5, not 137. So typhoral 135, VI polysaccharide one dose, booster after every three year. Okay? Sure. So now let's go back to next question. It is about tuberculin test. First option if you say, they say it entail injecting one tubercular unit of PPD in 0.1 ml. In the original question, they have written the word 0.1 ml also in 0.1 ml. So 0.1 ml dose 1 TU. No, this is wrong. When we inject tuberculin, it is 5 tubercular unit which we inject in 0.1 ml. 5 TU is injected in 0.1 ml, not 1 TU. So this is also wrong, but just minor wrong. The injection should be given with the needle B well facing downward. Needle B well should be facing upward while giving the vaccine. When we give it, uh, the tuberculin vaccine is given intradermally for tuberculin test. It is intradermally given. So it is almost plain to the body surface. And 
द बीवेल शुड बी अपवर्ड है ना दीवेल द अपर हाफ पार्ट दिस थ्रू विच वी आर फोर्सिंग इट इट शुड बी अपवर्ड नॉट डाउनवर्ड सो दिस इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग इट शुड बी अपवर्ड ओके देन वेन प्लेस्ड करेक्टली द इंजेक्शन शुड प्रोड्यूस ए पेल व्हील ऑफ वन टू टू एम एम नो इट शुड प्रोड्यूस ए पेल व्हील ऑफ सिक्स टू टेन एम एम नॉट वन टू टेन एम एम वन टू टू एम एम दिस इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग सी इज ऑल्सो रॉन्ग फोर्थ द इंजेक्शन शुड बी गिवेन बाई ए टूबरकुलिन सीरिंज ऑफ कोर्स दिस इज राइट इट शुड बी गिवेन विथ टूबरकुलिन सो ओनली करेक्ट आंसर इज फोर ओके ओनली करेक्ट इज फोर बट इफ यू हैव टू चूज बिटवीन वन एंड टू आई विल गो विथ वन बिकॉज फाइव टी यू एंड वन टी यू ओके बट इफ यू से बैक डाउनवर्ड दैट्स ए ग्रॉस मिस्टेक बीवेल शुड बी अपवर्ड एंड लेट सी इट डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द हॉर्स माउथ डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द बुक park what they are telling about it if you see it is clearly written here that a standard of 5 tu 5 tuberculin unit of ppd is defined to be given and it is given in 0.1 ml so 0.1 ml have 5 tu not 1 tu second point that when we put ah so Yeah, see, this is the derivative which we prepare five to you. But when we give it in Montuk's text, we do give one to you in point one ml. So option one was wrong. I was saying five to you based on this data here. Five tubercular unit is given. This is a standard. But in Montuk's text, we are giving one tubercular unit in one point one. So. option a and 4 were absolutely correct and the previous uh, question was correct from cms side so 1 tu is 0.1 ml second point you can see needle bevel facing upward it should not face downward needle bevel should be facing upward this point hai na needle bevel facing upward okay and then one more point was injection should produce a pale will of 6 to 10 mm they have written 1 to 2 mm no it was 6 to 10 mm and what is the best time to observe it 72 hour third day is the best time to see how much it has swollen and there are false positive and false negative in case of tuberculin test how will you remember it are you positive for bcg vaccine yes most of us are positive for bcg vaccine you can check it by taking your cloth out and on your arm you can see it so we are positive for bcg so false positive is also when there is history of bcg vaccine now are you positive for hiv or negative for hiv most of us are negative for hiv at, at least we think so so the disease for which we are negative hiv that is the same case where tuberculin false negative come ट्यूबरकुलिन का भी नेगेटिव वही आएगा जिसके लिए हम नेगेटिव हैं एच और ट्यूबरकुलिन का फॉल्स पॉजिटिव वही आएगा जिसके लिए हम पॉजिटिव हैं बीसीजी सो ट्यूबरकुलिन फॉल्स नेगेटिव इज फॉर विच वी आर आल्सो नेगेटिव एच एंड अदर इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज डिजीज कंडीशन एंड फॉल्स पॉजिटिव इज फॉर बीसीजी फॉर विच वी आर ऑल्सो पॉजिटिव डू रिमेंबर दिस पार्ट ओके चलो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इफ यू सी they are saying a system of ventilation in which fresh air is blown into the room aha ah, ah, achhi thandi hawa andar aa gayi and then there is a centrifugal function of the uh, fan to create a positive pressure and displace the uh, displace the ventilated air so this type of ventilation is plenum ventilation okay we all know exhaust ventilation means we are throwing man, man, air out like from exhaust fan so there are three type of ventilation exhaust ventilation balanced ventilation and plenum plenum is here air come in centrifugal action occur and then goes out that is plenum exhaust is when we are throwing air out and balanced ventilation means we are throwing some air out keeping some air in 
and the fourth and last method is air conditioning using AC. So plenum is the definition written here being asked directly. We can see it from park also if you see the plenum ventilation they are saying plenum ventilation means in this system air is blown into the room and by centrifugal force it goes out from it. Other than that there is balanced ventilation. Balance simply means that it is balanced. It is com com composition of exhaust and plenum together. So that's why it is balanced. And then there is air conditioning the fourth method. Okay. Next question Nalgonda technique is for defluoridation. It is to remove excess fluorine. And in this method, we add three things, lime alum bleaching powder, lab, we add lime alum bleaching powder to remove extra fluorine. Next question is about effect of smoking on cardiovascular disease. First line, nicotine stimulate adrenergic drive, raises the blood pressure and myocardial oxygen demand. We all know that. And that's why smoking can lead to hypertension. So this is correct. Second, it increases carbon monoxide and induce atherogenesis. Yes, that is also right. Smoking combined with uh, hemoglobin also and decreases the um, oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin also. And it can lead to carbon monoxide formation also. It lead to fall in protective high density lipoprotein. It can, we don't know, but it can be. And it reduces the apolipoprotein B, no. Apolipoprotein B is not reduced by smoking, but it does reduce HDL. So HDL is less, atherogenicity is high, uh, carboxyhemoglobin is high. Let's see it directly from part. So correct answer is 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 is option C. 1, 2, 3. That is here. Okay. Let's see it from Park. Park is saying some people commit suicide by drowning, but many by smoking. <laughs> And a unique human habit is smoking has identified major CSD. Uh, mechanism is carbon monoxide induces atherogenesis. So that was correct. Nicotine stimulation of adrenergic drive and raising blood pressure and MI oxygen demand. Very good. Lipid metabolism with fall in protective high HDL. So HDL fall and BP rises and carbon monoxide formation also occur. So all the three were right. Next question, expected outcome of government India initiative Suman. What is the target of Suman? Suman is targeting zero preventable in uh, maternal and newborn death. And it is preventable death that they are saying. If we can prevent it, we should be able to prevent it by giving more and more facilities to pregnant mother in government hospital. That is Suman. Okay. And it is also saying that there should be zero tolerance to saying no to mother for any services. We should not say no to mother for any services. She should be given all the services in government hospital. They forget to write if available. You know? If available, they should be given. But they don't write if available. Okay. So anyway, so zero is that thing. Suman, if you can see it is written clearly. It is uh, zero tolerance for denial of services to every woman and newborn visiting public health facility. This is the target of it and it is to end all preventable disease. You can see it. It is not to reduce it to 0.5% or 1%. It is to end all preventable. That means zero death, maternal infant death is the target of Suman, which stands for Surakshit Matritva Aswasan. All is well. Safe motherhood assurance. All is well. All is well. And that is Suman. Chalo. So, I hope it is clear. Zero is the target for Suman. Lux program help in improvement of facility in delivery room and maternity ward. And PM SMA program give free facility to pregnant mother like testing investigation on 9th of every month. So that is PM SMA, Suman and Lux very frequently asked. Next is with water contamination with high con of which chemical can lead to methemoglobinemia. So methemoglobinemia can occur due to which content in water? Answer is nitrate. Nitrate contamination cause methemoglobinemia. You can see it directly from the book also that when they talk about nitrate, they have just used it here that uh, uh, 
the guideline value for nitrate in drinking water is solely to prevent myth hemoglobinemia. We want to keep nitrate less to prevent myth hemoglobinemia. But in this page, along with nitrate role, we have also discussed mercury role. And uh, mercury mainly affects central nervous system. Okay. So do remember it. Nitrate cause myth hemoglobinemia. Now, next question. Uh, with reference to human body requirement for protein, what are the role of protein? First option they have given is, it is a key supply of source of energy. If protein will supply energy, what carbohydrate will do? So this is definitely not a role of protein. They require for maintenance of osmotic pressure within intravascular compartment, correct. Protein, especially albumin, help us to maintain pressure. That's why when there is liver failure, then albumin synthesis goes low and people suffer from pitting edema on leg and dependent part. Liver failure lead to pitting edema because protein synthesis is low, albumin is low. Third point, critical for upkeep of cell mediated immune response, of course, protein is needed for antibody formation and response. Vital for synthesis of certain hormone, this is also right. Some hormone are being prepared by protein, although fat is major role in preparing hormone, but protein also have some role. So, 2, 3, 4 is correct, 1 is not correct, C. Now, if you can see it from the book also, we think protein we need more than fat, but you can see it here. Protein is needed 10 to 15 and fat is needed 15 to 30. So protein is less needed than fat. 10 to 15 is protein in balanced diet, 15 to 30 is fat and 50 to 80 is protein. Second point, if you will see, all this uh, function has been given in detail that uh, the function of protein is, of course, maintenance of osmotic pressure, if you can see here, maintenance of osmotic pressure, synthesis of certain substance like antibody, plasma, protein, hemoglobin, enzyme, hormone. So, hormone synthesis also occur by protein and then uh, immune mechanism of body also by protein. So, that is the answer. B, C, D, all we are right. Then, NACO is which is not a work of NACO or which is a work of NACO? What is correct? A screening high risk case. This is of course a work of NACO. Facilitating adoption of orphan. Why orphan adoption can be NACO work? It is not related with NACO work. Public education towards safe sex. Of course NACO work. Treating HIV case free of cost. It can be also NACO work. So two is not NACO work. One, three, four are NACO work. Correct answer is C. Okay. Just by this work and we have written the work which are here best of luck for your future endeavor and as you can see getting a command over the whole topic is the best way these day because they can change the question but 90 95 percent question come from the same topic again and again so try to get command over topic and enjoy the journey through which you are going bye bye hasta la vista das vidaniya फिर मिलते हैं फिर मिलते हैं बाय बाय खुदा हाफिज हाय फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर हरमीत गोयल योर ऑब्स गाइनी फैकल्टी एंड टुडे आई एम डिस्कसिंग इन दिस वीडियो द यूपीएससी सीएमएस एग्जाम जुलाई 2023 द ऑब्स गाइनी क्वेश्चंस डिस्कशन यूपीएससी यूनियन पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन CMS Combined Medical Services Exam. This is Medical Officer Exam and this is a permanent job. So I am discussing the OBS gynae questions today. Now my first question is, if on amniocentesis, the alpha fetoproteins is found to be elevated in amniotic fluid, which defect or disorder in the fetus is likely to occur? So is it cardiac septal defects? That is cardiac disease or congenital heart disease you can say is it neural tube defects is it muscular dystrophy or it is galactosemia now what do you think should be the correct answer always we have studied that alpha fetoproteins are elevated in neural tube defects 
सो आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज बी दैट इज न्यूरल ट्यूब डिफेक्ट नाउ विच विटामिन इज टू बी गिवन इन द प्री कंसेप्शनल काउंसिलिंग फेज to prevent the neural tube defects so the answer is folic acid and the dose is 4 mg daily 2 months before planning the pregnancy and she should continue in the first trimester of pregnancy but here if the alpha fetoproteins is elevated and which disorder the baby is harboring or the fetus is harboring is neural tube defects now there are some of the causes for raised alpha fetoproteins friends i am not discussing uh, the causes like uh, the tumors etc i am just discussing what problems in pregnancy only that causes of raised alpha fetoproteins so it is neural tube defects abdominal wall defects or the pregnant lady can have wrong dates it is multiple pregnancy it is renal anomalies in the fetus or it is intrauterine fetal death initially it is elevated then if it is neural tube defects or abdominal wall defects how do you differentiate between the two we can differentiate it by acetylcholinesterase acetylcholinesterase is elevated in neural tube defects and not in the abdominal wall defects next question which of the following are the examples of lark contraceptives nowadays there is lot many questions being asked on lark contraceptives that is long acting reversible contraceptives so you have to remember there are three contraceptives which are under the lark contraceptive that is long acting reversible contraception number 1 is iucd number 2 is subdermal implants and number 3 is the injectables so copper iucd is correct answer implants are correct and lng iud is also correct so it is 1 2 3 all are correct now long acting reversible contraception is injectable iucds and subdermal implants next how many times in a year does withdrawal bleeding occurs in extended continuous regime of combined oral contraceptive pills so it is four times when you are giving combined oral contraceptive pills in a cyclical manner we give it for 21 days and then we stop it for one week she will have withdrawal bleeding now next question bilateral total salpingectomy is recommended surgical procedure to reduce the risk of which of the following epithelial ovarian tumor uterine tumor fallopian tube cancer or peritoneal cancer so the correct answer is epithelial ovarian tumor so reference for this is according to european journal of cancer bilateral salpingectomy reduces the risk of epithelial ovarian tumors by 49% serous ovarian tumors and peritoneal carcinomas are been hypothesized to originate from the fallopian tubes so doing the bilateral salpingectomy is going to reduce the risk for epithelial ovarian tumors by 49% next tongue bite occurs in eclampsia in tonic stage clonic stage coma stage or post ichthal stage so the correct answer is clonic stage okay in eclampsia the blood pressure is severely raised and there is convulsions that is gtcs convulsions and the cause of eclampsia is cerebral hypoxia or anoxia and cerebral edema and the drug to treat for eclampsia is magnesium sulfate you give it in a loading dose of 4 g 20% iv plus 10 g 50% intramuscular and you give the maintenance therapy of 5 g 50% 
that is you are following the prichard's regime in the hospitals fine now few lines about the clonic stage the reference textbook is datta obstetrics clearly in the chapter of pre eclampsia eclampsia it is mentioned that the tongue bite occurs in the tongue bite occurs in the clonic stage all the voluntary muscles undergo alternate contraction and relaxation the whole body is involved in convulsions and biting of the tongue occurs there is blood stained frothy discharge from the mouth so it occurs in the clonic stage not the tonic stage next question indication for removal of intrauterine contraceptive device include which of the following it is perforation of the uterus preg is a b c so the correct answer is perforation of uterus pregnancy in c2 and one year of menopause persistent migraine may be a contraindication for oral contraceptive pills but not for intrauterine contraceptive device so it is a b c is the correct answer now indication for removal of iucd is it is very well given in your undergraduate textbook obstetrics datta and shaw's textbook of gynae that is persistent excessive bleeding due to property but initially 2 to 3 months if bleeding is occurring you have to give reassurance but if the bleeding is persisting and reassurance plus hematinics and if there is any source of infection you add antibiotics but in spite of the treatment still the bleeding is persisting and it is excessive then you have to remove it perforation of the uterus you remove iucd partial expulsion again you remove pregnancy with iucd in c2 one year after the menopause or effective life span of the iucd is over these all are the indications for removal of iucd which of the following are absolute contraindications for the combined oral contraceptive pills is it severe hypertension pregnancy diabetes with retinopathy or gall bladder disease severe hypertension blood pressure more than 160 by 110 is absolute indication for removal of uh, for you know like uh, you can't give combined oral contraceptive pills because estrogen is responsible for all these problems pregnancy you are supposed to withdraw the combined ocps you will not give diabetes with retinopathy that is called as diabetes with complications these three are absolute contraindications absolute contraindications whereas gall bladder disease now a days is a relative contraindication so answer to this question the correct options are 1 2 and 3 so the correct answer according to me is a okay next 27 year old recently married female comes to family planning clinic requesting for long term reversible contraception which of the following is the best suited so always remember young married female asking for a contraception the best contraception for a young married female is always combined oral contraceptive pills because if used carefully the failure rate is just 0.1 per 100 women year whereas diaphragm the failure rate is 4 to 6 if there is a perfect use and if it is used with spermicidal agents next plenon next plenon is not very very preferred contraceptive in a married female and chaya that is saheli is not preferred so for always in a newly married female it is clearly written in the textbook it is always combined oral contraceptive pills now which one of the following is an indication for cold knife 
conization. In cold knife conization, you are removing, cutting the cervix in a cone shaped manner, removing the transformation zone, which is the most common site for squamous cell carcinoma, and removing the endocervical gland. So, you are reducing the risk of adenocarcinoma cervix as well. Now, let us see which of the following answer fits into this question. Treatment of Nebothian follicles on ectocervix, no, it is not done for cold knife conization is not done for this condition. It is negative endocervical curettage, no. If it is positive ECC only, then you do conization. Squamous cell carcinoma stage 2A, you are going to go for a radical hysterectomy or you are going to give radiotherapy if patient is unfit. Okay. So, the correct answer to this question is inconsistent finding of colposcopy cytology and colposcopic directed biopsy. So, that means there is a discrepancy between the cytology, colposcopy and colposcopic directed cervical biopsy. So, that is a very, very clear indication for conization. Next question, which of the following statements are correct regarding female sterilization? It can be done 24 to 48 hours of delivery, correct. Ideal time for interval ligation is luteal phase, wrong. It can be combined with medical termination of pregnancy, this is true, this is true. It is preventive measure against serous ovarian tumors, this is also true. So, according to me, the correct answer is 1, 3 and 4. So, the correct answer is C. Next, the most popular technique for tubal ligation is always the pomeroys technique. Which part of the fallopian tube is removed? Is isthmic part of the fallopian tube is removed because ampulla is the widest portion of the fallopian tube and if ampulla is removed, there will not be any chance for recanalization. So, most of the time, it is the isthmic part of the fallopian tube which is being removed in the Pomeroy's technique for tubal ligation. This is Pomeroy's technique with a Babcock's forceps. The fallopian tube is being elevated. You identify with the fimbrian end, then you pass a ligature and cut the fallopian tube part which you have ligated or made a loop and send it for histopathological examination. This is Irving's no longer preferred. This is Madlener's where with the silk thread you tie the knot and then you crush the base. And this is Kroner's fimbriectomy. There is no chance for, you know, like regeneration of the fimbria if any recanalization is uh, needed in future. So, the best technique or the most popular technique is the Pomeroy's technique. Schiller dual bodies is a characteristic histopathological feature of which one of the following? Is it dysgerminoma? No. Is it non-gestational ovarian choriocarcinoma? No. Is it sex cord stromal tumors? No. So, it is a histopathological finding in endodermal sinus tumor. Now, this is Schiller dual body. Although image based questions are not being asked, the why I have added up the images just to, uh, to create a very, very clear picture in your mind and might be some of you might be giving the PG entrance exam subsequently after giving the UPSC. Okay, so for that reason, I have added up the images. Otherwise, in UPSC CMS exam, till today, there is no image based questions. It is always a clinical questions. Now, which one of the following is the distinguishing feature of cystocele from Gartner's cyst or Gartner's cyst from cystocele? Marked cuff impulse in Gartner's cyst, marked ill-defined Gartner's cyst. There is no impulse on cuffing in cystocele. So, Gartner's cyst is not reducible. That is the most important feature of Gartner's cyst that differentiate it from the cystocele. Gartner cyst is a benign vaginal cyst that originates from the Gartner's duct which is 
wolfian duct remnant that is vestigial remnant of mesonephric duct and it is not reducible surgical treatment by ventro suspension of the uterus is used for what condition so the answer is retroversion of the uterus and which ligament is used answer is round ligament is used because retroverted uterus favors the genital prolapse if the uterus is in antiverted posture very less likely that genital prolapse can occur 29 year old female presents with 3 months amenorrhea that means this is a pregnant lady in this question is been talked about presents to the gynae opd with complaints of something coming out of her vagina on clinical examination she was found to have single live fetus and second degree second degree cervical descent okay which of the following suits the best management whenever there is a pregnant lady and presenting with genital prolapse the best conservative management is the ring pessary okay so the answer to this question is ring pessary ring pessary can be used in the patients of genital prolapse who are pregnant or it is used during lactation lactation phase or you can say puerperium phase and in elderly females unfit for unfit for any surgery unfit for any surgery okay these are the three important indications for the use of ring pessary so in this question it is the ring pessary now genital prolapse cervical descent this is what is a ring pessary again there are no image based questions in upsc cms exam it is just to make it clear and those who want to give further pg entrance exam for that reason i am adding up these images now next question during the delivery of hiv infected female which of the following are recommended zudovudine is given at the onset of labor elective cesarean section reduces the risk of vertical transmission amniotomy and oxytocin augmentation should be done antiretroviral therapy should be given to all new nates so here the wrong answer is amniotomy and oxytocin augmentation usually is not recommended zudovudine elective cesarean and this now let me tell you now a days in the mode of delivery the preferred mode of delivery is vaginal delivery in hiv positive the mode of delivery is the vaginal delivery so this statement elective cesarean section reduces the risk of vertical transmission no doubt about it okay but safest or preferred nowadays is the vaginal delivery so but if you have to select between elective cesarean or amniotomy amniotomy and oxytocin augmentation is never done so it is 1 2 and 4 and whenever a pregnant lady is hiv positive you have to give antiretroviral therapy to the neonate and also you should start the antiretroviral therapy in her as early as possible and continue throughout the trimesters and rest of the life this is what is a latest recommendation next which of the following can be a complication in the baby due to post maturity of the pregnancy post maturity the important or biggest risk for post maturity is that the lifespan of the placenta is over there are calcification in the placenta and fibrin nodes so the oxygen supply nutrition to the baby is been affected in cases of post maturity so there is hypoxia and this leads to vagus stimulation and there is passage of meconium and there is risk of meconium aspiration syndrome there is hypoglycemia because after the baby is born okay hypoglycemia can be a, a complication because it is a full grown baby but intraventricular hemorrhage usually does not occur because intraventricular hemorrhage is a risk for preterm babies preterm babies polycythemia occurs due to hypoxia occurring in this case so i am going to mark the answer as 1 2 and 4 are correct answers next 
intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy which of the following features are present now let me tell you most of the questions are being framed from your undergraduate textbook obstetrics data and shaw's textbook of gynae as it is the lines are being framed from that okay if you open up the book and you open up the specific topic or chapter you can find most of the points there okay so first point pruritus after 28 weeks of pregnancy especially in the palms and soles this is true serum bilirubin level more than 5 mg percent raised levels of serum bile acids this is also true features subside within 2 weeks postpartum this is also true so in the textbook it is clearly written serum bilirubin serum bilirubin never goes beyond 5 mg percent okay serum bilirubin usually is less than 5 mg and usually it is mild jaundice it is not deep jaundice okay one more thing the most common cause for jaundice in pregnancy is viral hepatitis okay number 2 the next common cause for jaundice in pregnancy is intra hepatic cholestasis third cause for jaundice in pregnancy is drug induced so you have to remember but in case of intrahepatic cholestasis deep jaundice is not seen so the correct answer to this question is 1 3 and 4 answer is c part 1 3 and 4 statements are correct next which of the following are the blood values of iron deficiency anemia serum iron is less than 30 micrograms per deciliter total iron binding capacity is less percentage saturation is less serum ferritin is below 30 micrograms per liter okay so always we remember total iron binding capacity is elevated in iron deficiency anemia so this is the wrong statement so correct answers are 1 3 and 4 okay which is the best marker for iron stores best marker for iron stores answer is serum ferritin serum ferritin now next which of the following is correct about chaya contraceptive chaya is saheli that was sent croman it is potent anti it is potent anti estrogenic and weak estrogenic activity this is true failure rate exact failure rate is 1.83 per 100 women year it is non steroidal contraceptive pill and it is been given in national family planning program okay so this is also true it creates asynchrony between zygote and endometrium so it prevents implantation this is also true but it inhibits ovulation is not true so the correct answer is 1 2 and 4 correct answer is 1 2 and 4 next so this is chaya pill which is centcroman that is previously saheli this is ormeloxifen that is sir selective estrogen receptor modulator now secondary arrest dilatation during the progress of labor may be due to which of the following factors poor uterine contractions cessation of cervical dilatation despite strong uterine contractions disproportion and malpresentation so the correct answer is 2 and 3 only 
नेक्स्ट फर्स्ट स्टेज ऑफ लेबर इज फ्रॉम फुल डायलिटेशन ऑफ सर्विक्स टू द एक्सपल्शन ऑफ द बेबी नो दिस इज सेकेंड स्टेज ऑफ लेबर मैटर्नल बियरिंग डाउन एफर्ट्स एंड एंड्स विद द फुल डिलीवरी ऑफ द बेबी दिस इज फर्स्ट प्लस सेकेंड स्टेज onset of true labor pains and ends with the full dilatation of cervix that is the correct answer formation of bag of water is a feature of true labor pains so the correct answer is onset of true labor pains and ends with the full dilatation of cervix full dilatation of cervix is 10 cm next vesico vaginal fistula vvf is classified as complicated if it has which of the following features size more than 3 cm correct actually it is written as 4 cm then bladder involvement supra trigonal then presence of prior radiation if it has developed to post radiation fistula then also that is called as complicated so the correct answer is 1 2 and 4 which of the following set of muscles collectively form the levator ani muscle levator ani muscle is a very important muscle to prevent the genital prolapse this is the true muscular support to the uterus okay so levator ani muscle has got three parts pubo coccygeus ilio coccygeus and ischio coccygeus so it is pubo coccygeus ischio coccygeus and ilio coccygeus which is not a part of levator and i is sacro coccygeus so the correct answer is 1 2 and 4 next blood supply to the uterus comes from which of the following arteries so always remember uterine artery which is a branch of anterior division of internal iliac artery ovarian artery which is a branch of abdominal aorta at l2 level and the third artery which is also giving blood supply during the pregnancy to the uterus is the vaginal artery so the correct answer is these three arteries inferior vesicle is much lower artery so the answer is 1 2 and 3 next which one of the following is a prerequisite for endometrial ablation endometrial ablation you do it in aub cases when it is the cause is functional that is hormonal imbalance in that case you have ruled out that there is no cancer there is no endometrial hyperplasia there is no fibroid there is no adenomyosis when all these and the size of the uterus is not big size so these should be ruled out or these are the contraindication pregnancy is also a contraindication so the correct answer to this question is let us see the options uterus is 12 to 14 week size this is wrong this is wrong women wants to preserve her reproductive function if you are doing the ablation because ablation is still the basalis layer so that endometrium do not regenerate so the depth of ablation is up to 6 mm depth and you destroy till the basalis layer so that so that endometrium do not do not regenerate okay so fibroid again is a contraindication so women who wants to preserve her uterus only that is the indication rest are the contraindications for endometrial ablation and there is you know like tcre which can be done that is hysteroscopy trans cervical resection of endometrium which of the following day menstrual cycle is the best for endometrial sampling endometrial sampling to check for ovulation is always done 2 through 3 days before the expected periods so the correct answer is 21 to 23 day what do you check in the histopathology histopathology endometrial biopsy sample you send it for histopathology and what you see is secretory endometrium you check for the secretory endometrium okay next 27 year old female married for 3 years regularly cohabiting with the husband 
comes to the gynae OPD with complaints of inability to conceive for two years. And during the clinical examination, HSG was done and HSG showed that there is an irregular uterine cavity and rigid fallopian tubes with nodulations. Irregular uterine cavity with rigid fallopian tubes, this is lead pipe appearance of fallopian tube. Lead pipe appearance of fallopian tube you see in genital tuberculosis and genital tuberculosis very badly damages the fallopian tubes. So the answer here is the genital tuberculosis because it is written as rigid fallopian tubes with nodulations. So this is an HSG which is showing the lead pipe appearance of the fallopian tube. It has become very very rigid showing the genital tuberculosis. Again, I am saying image based questions are not been asked. So, that is why I have explained first and now I just to make it very, very clear, I am showing you the image. Next, prophylactic ophrectomy is recommended, okay, in a high risk female for which of the following always prophylactic ophrectomy has been recommended whenever there is a genetic transmission or there is a defective gene that is a BCA1 or 2 gene mutations are present BRCA1 gene is present on chromosome number 17 and BRCA2 gene is present on chromosome number 13 and if a female is carrying there is mutation in this gene then the risk of the breast cancer, ovarian cancer and the familial polyposis colon has been increased. So, it is recommended for BRCA1 gene and two gene carriers and family history of breast and colon and ovarian cancer because there is a genetic transmission of these tumors genetically predisposition is seen. It is not routinely recommended for tubo ovarian abscess patients. So, the correct answer to this question is 1 and 2 only. So, the answer is A and it is 1 and 2 only. Next. The daily requirement of iron during the second half of pregnancy is 6 mg per day. Next, carbohydrate metabolism in a normal pregnancy shows it is always fasting hypoglycemia and postprandial hyperglycemia and there is hyperinsulinemia due to due to increase in the insulin resistance. Hence, the females are prone to develop diabetes in pregnancy if there is any risk factor present, okay? Or even if there is no risk factor, that is why whenever a pregnant lady comes to the first antenatal visit in the antenatal clinic, you are supposed to do the check the blood sugar levels and it should be repeated at 24 to 28 weeks in cases of DIPSI criteria, that is a glucose challenge test because that is the time when the insulin resistance is maximum, okay? So, the hormones that causes increase in the insulin resistance is cortisol, it is caused by HPL that is human placental lactogen and other steroid hormones. Now, typical case of iron deficiency anemia in pregnancy will show which of the following. Hemoglobin less than 10 gram, this is true. Packed cell volume less than 30 percent, this is true. Microcytic hypochromic anemia. Yes, this is true. So, false statement is MCHC more than 30 percent, then that will not be anemia. Okay. So, the correct answer is 1, 2 and 4. Next, this is a peripheral smear showing microcytic hypochromic anemia. Microcytic hypochromic anemia, you can see in iron deficiency anemia, in thalassemia, then in sideroblastic anemia, then in cases of lead poisoning and then in cases of chronic illness. So, these are the causes for microcytic hypochromic anemia. Next, which of the following are the clinical features of a molar pregnancy? History of amenorrhea and vaginal bleeding, very true. Patient has excessive vomiting, this is because of HCG. History of passage of grape-like vesicles per vaginum, so 1, 2, 3, all are correct. This is most consistent 
finding and it is a sure shot finding if the female is you know like uh, alert enough to tell you that she has a history of amenorrhea bleeding and there is expulsion of grape like vesicles then it is molar pregnancy now what is the investigation of choice to diagnose molar pregnancy is ultrasound and what do you see on ultrasound is snow storm appearance again images are not been asked this is a picture of complete mole where fetus is absent and it is just grape like vesicles next question which of the following vaccines can be given to a pregnant lady covid vaccine yes hepatitis b vaccine yes rabies vaccine yes but mmr vaccine is mmr vaccine measles mumps rubella is contraindicated in a pregnant lady so the correct answer is 1 3 and 4 so answer c 1 3 and 4 and measles mumps rubella vaccine is absolutely contraindicated in a pregnant female next which of the following characteristics of true labor pains intensive intensity and duration of contraction increase progressively true progressive effacement and dilatation of cervix true formation of bag of water true pain is confined to the lower abdominal pain this is false this is a feature of false labor pains so the correct answer to this question is 1 2 3 are correct so the option a is the correct answer to this question many question has come from the obstetrics and normal labor topic is very very important many questions they have asked anemia many questions they have asked now next which are the parts of the active management of third stage of labor one or the other exam every time they are asking active management of third stage of labor let's review before we see the options after the delivery of the baby or after the delivery of the anterior shoulder you give intramuscular oxytocin intramuscular bolus number 2 you deliver the placenta by controlled contraction method number 3 you do delayed cord clamping okay these are the three important steps in active management of third stage of labor sometimes intermittent uterine tone assessment is also a feature but remember if it is written as uterine massage uterine massage is no longer a part of active management of third stage of labor it is a part of management of atonic postpartum hemorrhage so here this is true this is true and this is true so answer is 1 3 and 4 1 3 and 4 means c is the correct answer so injection oxytocin is not given after the delivery of the first twin because we have to deliver the second baby next this is controlled contraction method image just to make it clear to you now which of the following are correct regarding acute mastitis of the breast so this is very very common complaint the pregnant ladies after the delivery when the baby starts suckling the breast this is a very very common complaint which we find in our clinical practice it is usually occurring in first 2 to 4 weeks postpartum this is true microscopic examination of the breast milk shows leukocyte and bacterial count is more this is also true uh, the common organisms are bacterioids this is false common organism is staph aureus or sometimes staph epididermis can also cause but the most important cause for this is a staph aureus okay so source of infection is infant's nose and throat that is if it is poor feeding habits poor feeding habits or it is poor hygiene then that can increase the chance for the acute mastitis of the breast okay if it is unilateral then lady can feed the child from the alternate breast but if it is bilateral acute mastitis then breastfeeding is contraindicated for the duration till the condition is been treated so the correct answer to this question is 1 2 and 4 so what is matching is option number b
Now, as per the classification of obstetric anal sphincter injury, according to RCO, G, tear greater than 50% external anal sphincter is of which degree? Is 3B. Okay. If it is first degree tear, first degree perineal tear, perineal tear, then that is mucosa and skin tear. If it is second degree perineal tear, it is mucosa skin plus muscle tear. If it is third degree tear, then that is anal sphincter tear. It is 3A, 3B, 3C. And fourth degree tear when it is anal canal tear or rectal mucosa tear. So these are the, it is belonging to third degree. And if it is more than 50% external anal sphincter tear, then it is 3B. Okay, so this is RCOG classification. First degree injury to the perineal skin. Second degree is perineal muscles tear. Third degree is the anal sphincter tear. 3A is less than 50% external uh, anal sphincter tear. 3B is more than 50%. 3C is when external anal sphincter and internal anal sphincter tear occurs. And fourth degree is when anal rectal mucosa tear has been taking place. Now, what are the causes for lactational failure after delivery? Infrequent suckling, true. Depression or anxiety stage or in the purpurium, true. Prolactin inhibitors, that is also true. Okay. So, the correct answer is D. Let us see, lactational failure occurs after the delivery. Is infrequent suckling if the baby has suckling reflex, sucking more frequently, then the milk secretion is increased. Now, depression or anxiety, this is true. Reluctance of the nursing to nursing, she is not frequently feeding the child. She has been very, very reluctant. Painful breast lesion, yes, true. And prolactin inhibitors like ergot or pyridoxine, then all these are the causes for lactational failure. So, that's all from this session. I hope now the things, those who have given the exam, uh, the very much OBS gynae questions are being clarified with you. And you know, like references, you can check it from your obstetrics textbook, Data and Shaw's textbook of gynae. Most of the questions, answers, uh, you can find it there itself. So that's all from this discussion. And rest of the other discussions of other subjects will be taken up by my colleagues. So, all the best for other upcoming exams that you are going to write. That's all. Bye. So, hello, welcome to the UPSC 2023. So, I hope the paper was good. The options are a bit confusing in certain cases, but yes, overall, if you see the paper was conceptual. Let us start with this. So, the first is, what is the function of the larynx? It's a very straightforward question. Fixation of the chest, aids in swallowing the food, phonation, respiration. Students, phonation and respiration, phonation and respiration are actually the functions which are known. Very important, very important. Now, it when we talk about uh, the concept of fixation of the chest and aids in swallowing the food, what I prefer is that, when you are swallowing, there is a closure of the larynx and if it doesn't close, basically the food will go inside. So, the option D is far, far, far better than C. Next is, which of the followings are included in the classical triad and the presentation of pericardial tamponade? So, when we talk about pericardial tamponade, you know we have hypotension and why we have hypotension students? It is because of decreased cardiac output. So, the compressive cardiogenic shock is causing decreased cardiac uh, output. So, decreased arterial pressure, 3 is there. Then we have muffled heart sound. And why muffled heart sounds? Because there is a clot in between the two layers. So, ecto and the pericardium, there is a clot. So, muffled heart sounds. And along with that, increase CVP. So, you get to see engorged neck veins. You don't get to see collapsed neck veins. 
so yes tachycardia muffled heart sounds and decreased arterial pressure so 1 2 3 this is what is the right answer next is masoka staging is used for this is a straight forward question and the answer for this is thymoma so thymoma you know it's the most common you can say thoracic tumor so this is the most common thoracic tumor when you talk about anterior mediastinum so this is the anterior mediastinum and this tumor is gauged or it's graded by masokas whether there is invasion into the capsule or whether whether it is extending into the local structures i shall not be discussing the masoka staging right now but i have taught this in class also masoka staging this is used for thymoma this is what is next is let us talk about one more question even though this question is not directly related to surgery what are the features of cauda equina syndrome first of all the lumbar and the sacral plexus they get compressed so when they will be getting compressed you will have the urinary difficulties and the problem with defecation also will be there so variable rectal and urinary symptoms they are right of course there will be motor weakness in the lower limbs this is also right the patient will have low back pain as well as saddle anesthesia so all 1 2 3 4 are right so what do you have to choose in this case yeah so option d is there so all of them are right now which of amongst them is a long anesthetic so you know that ropiva cane is the longest amongst them the ropiva cane is the longest anesthetic now when we talk about glasgow's comma scale so if we talk about the grading of glasgow's comma scale we have minor when we talk about minor what is that gcs 15 by 15 is minor then we have mild what is mild gcs 14 to 15 by 15 with episode of loss of consciousness then what is moderate gcs 9 to 13 and what is severe gcs 3 to 8 this is what is so what are you seeing here it is nothing but a moderate injury a moderate level of injury because the glasgow coma scale is 10 next is gas gangrene with crepitus is a very evident sign of gas gangrene and a sweet smelling brown exuberate this is nothing but clostridium perfringens this is what is so we also get to see that water can like uh, defect water can perineum we say water can defect or the sweet smelling brown exuberate with that crepitus now again let us talk about the complication of enteral nutrition in enteral nutrition you are placing the tubes so you rails tube enteral jejunal tube or you can say that is naso jejunal tube or you can say we are doing a feeding gastrostomy feeding jejunostomy so tube dislodgement or tube malposition is one complication that we all know now why diarrhea happens because of the dumping syndrome so dumping why because you are if you talk about the feeding gastrostomy versus feeding jejunostomy so when you are giving the food in the stomach it stays in the stomach for a longer time but when we are doing it and uh, giving the food directly into the jejunum in case of feeding jejunostomy a high osmotic load a carbohydrate load that generates that diarrhea and this is again the reason for diarrhea bloating so this is what is very simple predisposition to systemic sepsis because the tubings are there there is a risk of sepsis and therefore enteral nutrition is relatively contraindicated in that electrolyte imbalance is more predominant with parenteral nutrition than enteral nutrition so what i would say 1 2 3 is far better answer than 1 2 4 students all four are right but 1 2 3 is a better answer than 1 2 4 now which amongst them is the correct about the blood substitutes so they are biomimetic they are biomimetic they are extensively used in war injuries they are perfluorocarbons this is also true or they are also hboc what is hboc hemoglobin based oxygen carriers so we also use recombinant recombinant you can say oxygen hemoglobin for that so yes this is also right this is also right they are extensively used in you can say war injuries of course you cannot carry the blood so they are the one which are extensively available and they can be used readily students of course they are biomimetic and that is why they are accepted by the body so here all four are right but what i would say 2 uh, 3 4 so 2 3 4 would be my choice of going with the answer when we talk about ischemia reperfusion syndrome so do you know when there is ischemia there is build up of lot of you can say inflammatory products so inflammatory toxins 
they actually build up and what are they this is because of the what anaerobic anaerobic respiration because of anaerobic respiration you know there are substance p then you have lactate so these are all inflammatory products the moment the perfusion reestablishes now they are circulated in the body so let us go to the options ischemia reperfusion syndrome build up of bicarbonate and sodium ions no acute mesenteric thrombosis no thromboembolic angiopathy no it is hypoxia and activation of inflammation and when the perfusion reestablishes it is washed into the systemic circulation which of the following statement is true regarding inflammatory bowel disease so we have two things we have crohn's and we have uh, ulcerative colitis so rectum is always involved in crohn's no it is always involved in ulcerative colitis perianal disease is common in crohn's perianal disease is more common in ulcerative colitis fistula formation is common in crohn's no it is common in ulcerative colitis stricture formation uh, i'm say talking about it's it's seen in crohn's so stricture formation is again uh, more common in the crohn's so what should be the answer here so all of them are or contradicting each other remember the perianal disease or you can say the crohn's fistula so the crohn's fistula is one entity which has been commonly seen in comparison to the b point that is fistulization is common in ulcerative colitis remember option d is far 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 better than option b a sinks taken black mold tube you know the sinks taken black mold tube is a double lumen tube which is used for creating the tamponade effect so that is where the tamponade effect is created on the esophageal varices or they can be used for any bleeding so it can be used for you, you can see even uterine tamponade also it can be used even in the liver injuries also it can be used so b is the correct answer for this you inflate the balloon and you create that pressure we generally keep a pressure around 40 to 45 mm hg the most common benign tumor of the liver is nothing but hemangioma so hemangioma is the most common if they would have asked the most common benign lesion i would have said simple hepatic cyst the best position to palpate the minimum enlargement so what is the best position a uh, supine with knee flex supine with knee flexed this is one thing that you have suppose if you read the options supine with lower limb extended no by manual palpation in supine position palpation of left subcostal in knee elbow position so left subcostal you are going for palpation in a knee elbow position so when we talk about the knee elbow position students this is again a good palpation of left subcostal in the right lateral decubitus so when we talk about the right lateral decubitus so i will turn the patient to the right side allow the spleen to go to fall a bit and then i will go for so students option b is better than option d this is what is important option b is better than option d next is 28 year old male presents to you with a duodenal ulcer with perforation peritonitis after recovering well for 5 days he developed high grade fever with chills and symptoms of toxemia he also developed right shoulder tip pain so there is an abscess in the subphrenic cavity why would he develop Uh, the shoulder tip radiation of the pain the answer is students this is indirectly this is indirectly associated with what surgical site organ site infection basically so this is what is c is better answer than a c is better answer than a next is in a seat belt syndrome you know the injury the maximum injury happens to what students to the mesentery and what type of injury develops we develop a bucket handle tear so bucket handle tear over this mesentery this is what is very 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 important and that is where the bleeding occurs from now which of the following is a cause of exudative ascites again this is not a question of surgery but i'll tell you congestive cardiac failure portal vein obstruction nephrotic syndrome they are all transudative transudative ex you can say ascites it is the malignancy which is associated with exudative ascites so you must have seen or learned that sag concept here serum albumin ascitic albumin gradient so that is what is again very important less than 1.5 more than 1.5 i just forgot it when i'm just recalling it when i used to study this which of the following statement is regard true regarding the efast 
So E fast, what are you doing? You are going to assess the peritoneal cavities for the collection. Then you are also assessing the right and the left thorax and the pericardial. So it's a technique to assess the free fluid in abdominal cavity, thoracic and pericardium. So if you read the options, it is used for abdominal cavity only, no. Pelvic cavity, no. Only for pleural cavity, no. So it is for all. So option B is right. A 47-year male came to surgery OPD with history of recurrent episodes of GTI. Now he gives a complaint of frothy urine with bubbles and this is what is a classical phenomena of colovesical fistula. So the answer is colovesical fistula. It's a straightforward question colovesical that the colonic gas goes inside and that is why you have the frothy bubbly urine. Which of the following is seen in normal pressure hydrocephalus? Again, a medicine question. So, cognitive decline, incontinence and gait disturbance. This is what I know that 2, 3, 4 are there. But here, I am not getting anything like 2, 3, 4. So, I would mark the option D. So, 3 and 4 is definitely seen here. A tobacco chewer with heavy BD smoker, tobacco and BD, he is enjoying his life. With diminished mouth opening, so you have the trespass also. With occasional spitting of blood with saliva, maybe he is splitting uh, because of some growth inside. So, he has a white buccal mucosa with bright red velvety plaque. What are you dealing with now? Erythroplakia, if you compare it on HPE, you get to see parakeratosis in case of white buccal mucosa leukoplakia and you get to see dyskeratosis in case of the erythroplakia. Collar stud abscess. Why it is known as a collar stud? Try to understand. So, whenever you wear that kurta, the buttons are like one part of the button will go here and then the deeper part will go on the other side. So, this is just like again the hand cufflinks. So, you have two ways. So, this is the muscle. So, this is the neck muscle, floor of the neck or the neck muscles. Half part on that side, half part on this side. That is what is known as the collar stud. And this is very common with chronic granule matters caseating granulomas. So, tuberculosis at the level of neck. So, these suppurative lymph nodes give you cholesterol abscess. The best cosmetic results from the breast reconstruction is achieved with and this is what is very, 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 very important. It's the tram flap. Remember, latissimus dorsi flap will come and heal this area, cover this area, but it is a flat muscle. If you see the abdominal muscle, that is having the bulk. So, the breast mound effect is created with that. That tram only. So, tram, this is what is very important. Now, this 8 cellular dermal matrix, what is this? This A cellular dermal matrix are implants. So, implants over the time will undergo fibrosis and you can say shrinkage. So, the cosmetic appearance will always change after 2 3 years where there will be cosmetic disparity. One breast normal and one breast will be shrunken or you can say small in size. Now, which of the following is correct regarding trichobezoar? What is that? Trichobezoar is a hairball. So, psychiatric patients, they have a property to pluck the hairs and enjoy that. It is also seen post vagotomy when, when the enteral, you can say clearance is not there. And that is why even leafy vegetables get, you can say, uh, get to form themselves into a phytobezoar. So, it is common as a hairball. It's common psychiatric, common complications, bleeding and perforation are not there, but obstruction is there. So, 1 and 2 and 3, they are definitely, they are treated with long course proton pump inhibitors. They don't have any role in this. Trichobezoar needs an endoscopic removal. Phyto and lactobezoar, they require an enzymatic, you can say, uh, treatment first. So, you use papain enzyme. There are a lot of enzymes which can dissolve. If that doesn't work, then you require a surgery. So, 1, 2, 3 is what I would mark as an answer here. Inferior rectal artery, everyone knows, is a branch of internal pudendal artery. So, this is again a straightforward question. Zollinger Ellison syndrome, that is gastrinoma. Recurrent episodes of dysentery. Why there is recurrent episode of dysentery? Because the excess acid will neutralize the pancreatic juices, resulting in that. So, 4 is also right. Non beta islet cell tumor, it's a tumor of gastrin G cells. So, gastrin producing tumor. So, it's a tumor of G cells. Recurrent ulceration despite the treatment. Why? Because of uncontrolled what students? Uncontrolled production of the acid. Fulminant gastric ulcers. Students should not only get gastric ulcer, duodenal ulcers, even general ulcers. So, all 1, 2, 3, 4 are right. So, here what we need to choose 2, 3, 4 because not only gastric ulcer but duodenal and jejunal ulcers are also seen. Which of the following is correct statement with regard to diverticulum? Michael's diverticulum are right. Let us read. Persistent vitlo intestinal duct. True. It's a pseudo diverticulum. No, it's a true diverticulum. So, this is wrong. It's the most commonly seen on the entry mesenteric border, heterotopic mucosa. So, 1, 3, 
and 4. 1, 3 and 4 is the right answer for this. And again, which of the following statement is correct regarding to colorectal cancer? Left-sided cancers present with bleeding, absolutely true because ulcerative lesions are more common. Right-sided carcinomas present with iron deficiency, yes. The anemia is a classical manifestation. Right-sided colorectal cancer is more common, no false. Colonoscopy is the investigation of choice. So, 1, 2 and 4. So, option B is right in this case. While managing esophageal perforation, which of the following favors non-operative management? Here we have to think about the Pittsburgh score. So, Pittsburgh score or a patient where the esophageal perforation is contained to the mediastinum, where there is small septic load and perforation may be by a flexible endoscope because they are very small. So, 1, 2 and 3. 1, 2 and 3 are the right answer. Abdominal esophagus, no, you need to go for surgery. So, what are the true regarding the familial adenomatous polyposis? It is associated with APC located on the 5P and Q. Let us see this. This is right. But what I know is 5Q21. So, it is not on the short arm. It is on the long arm. So, when we talk about this, it is on the long arm. It is inherited as autosomal recessive. No students, it is autosomal dominant in nature. More than autosomal recessive. So, this is again, again a doubtful. It is associated with 100% lifetime risk of development. Absolutely true. So, congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigmented epithelium. That's a part of Gardner syndrome. So, that is also true. So, let us see what should we mark. 1, 3 and 4 should be the answers here. Now, type 1 to type 3 collagen ratio during maturation is 3 is to 1. Everyone knows this is 3 is to 1. It's a straightforward question. Again, which of the following is related to gas gangrene? So, Clostridium perfringens is a gram positive anaerobic, gram negative aerobic. So, it's an anaerobic spore forming. So, it's a option B, which is a straightforward question. Now, Gomperzian curve. Now, when we talk about Gomperzian curve, what is that? That's, that is actually an S-shaped growth. So, S-shaped growth is seen in whom, students? Not gallstone, not intestinal obstruction, not hernia. If you knew about this gallstone curves, curves are used for monitoring the growth. You would have easily marked that this is used for assessment of a tumor. A normal growth versus Gomperzian growth. What is Gomperzian? It will go to a peak and then come down. Now, 5-year-old male child comes with left-sided scrotal swelling. Left-sided scrotal swelling with no cuff impulse does not reduce on compression or lying down, but Parents give a definite history that the swelling is there. So, it's a congenital hydrocele. Eversion of sac should be done in this case. 25-year-old gentleman complains of dragging pain in the scrotum. The pain re reveals scrotal bag of worm. So, what are you dealing with? You are dealing with varicocele. The next thing is you have to go for the search of pampiniform plexus and you have to ligate them. So, excision of the pampiniform plexus. This is what we do. We Nowadays, we are doing a laparoscopic varicoselectomy. We don't we remove the affected testes and that is what is Palomo's procedure. So, the procedure they have written is Palomo's procedure. So, option D is right in this case. Next is a malnourished 60-year-old male went for surgery for strangulated sigmoid volvulus. After dissection, colostomy was fashioned. Post-operative period was stormy. He developed a painful calf swelling. What is that? Post-operative, this is DVT. This is what is very, very, very simple, straightforward. Pain in calf, post-strangulated sigmoid, you can say volvulus. This, this tells you about the ages on the higher side, a big surgery. The patient is having an active, you can say, stress. That is the reason for DVT here. What is salmon patch? Salmon patch are known as stork bite in the neck. So, that's a cavernous defect. So, it's a cutaneous cavernous defect. It is the usual site is the nape of the neck. It is common in children. It is not exactly hemangioma. It's a uh, venocapillary, you can say, cavernous defect. I would not say hemangioma. It needs surgical excision. No. So, 1, 2, 3. This is what? So, even if 2, 3 was there, I would have ma marked 2, 3 in that case. So, it's 1, 2, 3. That is the best answer in this case. Now, crippled trinone syndrome. Again, what are the things that we have? It's a vascular, cavernovascular defect. So, soft tissue hypertrophy, this is what we see. So, option 4 is there. Then students, cutaneous nevus, varicose veins. So, exactly varicose veins we, not, we don't see in this case. It's a venous defect. So, varicose vein, using the word varicose vein is not right. So, however, 1, 3 and 4. 1, 3 and 4 I would mark as the answer. Mickey Mouse sign. What is that Mickey Mouse sign? Common femoral artery. 
then we have common femoral vein and this is saphenous vein so common femoral vein and saphenous vein great saphenous vein so this is what is mickey mouse sign that we see in case of venous insufficiency or you can say sfj insufficiency thyroglossal duct what are the correct situation it is located in the midline of the duct it moves on swallowing but not on trunk position this is absolutely wrong it is treated with cyst trunk it may be the only functional thyroid tissue in the body now this is where the controversy arises thyroglossal duct so when we are talking about this option 1 is right option 3 is right so 1 and 3 1 3 1 it may be the only functioning thyroid tissue so now try to understand what is the origin of thyroglossal duct it is the medial enlarge so medial enlarge is the same structure which enlarges to form a tube and also enlarges to form a bilobed mass that bilobed mass will form majority of the thyroid and this is the tube so partially the option 4 might be taken as correct so 1 3 and 4 might be taken so i hope you enjoyed this session of recall with me thank you